right. Do we have everybody in? Yes. Looks like it. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, I'm Marissa Elkins. I'm uh, vice chair of the planning board. I'm filling in for uh, George. Uh, I never say his last name right. Kohut, uh, who is away. Um, and uh, so uh, thank you for your patience. We are a little shorthanded tonight. And so we were trying to see if we could uh, have a quorum we need, which we have a quorum, the quorum we need to begin. Uh, but uh, uh, at 7.50, that hearing, uh, we need to acquire one more person um, for that hearing, um, but we'll, we'll keep you posted. We're, we're working on that. Um, so um, just to begin with on the agenda, uh, we uh, before we get started with the agenda items, um, I would like to open uh, briefly for um, to hear if there's any public comment. I would just note that the public comment period is for anything that is not on the agenda tonight. Uh, if you have something you want to address to the uh, the planning board, I would also note that anything that is scheduled to be or expected to be before us in a future planning board uh, uh, meeting, uh, we cannot hear a comment on that um, because that would constitute ex parte uh, communication without both uh, without all sides present. And uh, so, if you are commenting on something that we know is coming before us uh, in a in the in the near future. Um, I will be cutting, I will have to cut you off because to allow further comment on something like that will be, it would be a violation of open meeting laws. I would note that um, there, uh, I know there's some discussion in the community about um, issues around the St. John's Church, and that is something that we are going to be uh, hearing in the future, uh, in the near future, and there will be an opportunity to speak on that issue. So if you're uh, if you were hoping to comment on that tonight, that is going to be something that, uh, according to open meeting laws, I will not um, be able to uh, allow to proceed tonight. Um, but you will have another opportunity in the future to speak um, on that. So, so with that said, um, if you can uh, raise your hand icon or if you can indicate. Um, uh, so I see uh, Terrence Masterson. And do I need to? You need to unmute yourself, Terry. Can you hear me? Could you tell us where those clauses are in the open meetings law? Uh, I, off the top of my head, I cannot. I do, uh, I do know that, um, uh, a uh, uh, that it is a, uh, a the hearings where there's something at issue that's before us um, is uh, requires that we hear f that both parties, any parties, interested parties, have the opportunity to speak, and are, and it's not uh, that we don't take comment uh, when everybody hasn't had notice and opportunity to be present. So, so no, I don't know the clause off the top of my head, what? but I do. Mm -hmm. I'm confident that that is what's okay. expected of you me. can't cite the clause and you are also saying in essence that you cannot entertain public comment on a topic that is not on an agenda right now that that is correct that it is it is uh, i can't under on something that i know will be before us okay. uh, and on the issue okay. of uh specifically i can i can tell you that if it's the saint edward's church that is a matter that's on appeal that will be coming back to the planning board uh, in the future. So we, we know for sure that is on appeal and that is something that could come before us, will come did before you, us. Did you say that's under the, um, that's under, Sorry, um, that's MGL. That's under MGL. You can Google it. It's, um, on the state statute. So anything that could, that the board knows will be coming before them, they're barred from speaking about it because it's not, uh, it's considered a violation of open meeting law because only one party is um, able to, it's not on a posted agenda. It hasn't been notified to the abutters. It hasn't been notified to the property owner. So that's the reason why the board can't hear on on the item. You just said that the board members can't speak to the issue, but we're here to simply voice public concern about the issue. That's point number one. And then point number two is, 
the paradox here is that you are identifying a potential agenda item for which there is no public knowledge, but yet you are taking public action to censor our comment. No what I would say is that there is going to be an opportunity, Sam, I got it. Um, there is going to be, a, uh, because we know it's going to be an agenda, an agenda item at that hearing, there will be an opportunity for all interested parties uh, to speak. And it is at that time that uh, we have an obligation to hear all public comment uh, and, and will and will certainly. Um, what we cannot do is something that we know is going to be before, and this is in that category of something we know is before us because it is in an appeal status. We cannot, we cannot hear uh, a comment on it. Is the appeal status a public issue now? We, it is, it is, it, is you, it has been appealed and it is coming before us. There's a public I, that's, document. I appreciate that, that you want to speak. I, I appreciate that you want to was speak, and we and we certainly are going to uh, give every opportunity according to the notice requirements um, that are required of us. We could be, uh, and certainly in that circumstance, if we don't allow you to speak, um, you would have a First Amendment issue, uh, and, and to press. And so, absolutely, you will be heard, and and so forth. Um, but by the same token, if we hear you tonight uh, on something that we know is coming before us, we could be subject to an open meetings law violation um, that puts us in jeopardy. So I would ask that you please respect our interpretation of this of this, and and know that you'll absolutely have the opportunity to comment in in the future when it is on the agenda. And if the status changes and it's not on appeal, and so therefore is not going to be, then it will be back and just subject to open comment. But it is it is known now that it is a future agenda item. So, um, so with that is uh, uh, is there uh, so Mr. Masterson is there is there for anything else uh, that you wish to comment on or? Uh, I would like to say something. Uh, sure, Mr. Dunn. Okay. Um, I just, uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so my name is John Dunn. I live at 213 State Street in Northampton. I'm here to ask the planning board's assistance in an overall matter of historic preservation in the city. So thanks for the opportunity to speak. Um, you know, I've been involved in affordable housing development and incidentally preserving historic buildings in Massachusetts and Connecticut for mm, over 30 years. Four of those buildings are in Northampton. They're still in Northampton. And they were said to be close to the end of their lifespan. But in fact, uh, the community discovered ways to preserve them and keep them as community resources for years to come. So on Sunday, the New York Times had a full page article about the latest amenity that people buying high end housing want. Guess what it is? It's views of historic architecture. Now, I had been here specifically to ask uh, for an intervention in a specific process, but uh, I'm not going to address that. Um, I don't claim to be an expert on zoning, but uh, it appears to me that many of the ordinances, and the regulations uh, surrounding historic preservation in the city are flawed and they're in conflict with one another and they need to be looked at very carefully. Uh, when uh, someone submits a zoning permit application and describes all of the buildings on the site, two of which they plan to demolish and one of which they plan to keep. Uh, if they should change their mind about that, it seems like uh, it should be uh, a matter for the planning board to look again at the permit. Um, but in general, uh, you know, Historic buildings are an amenity that are of extreme importance 
in this city. You know, if, pe if people don't live, move here from other places because um, we're close to the ocean, you know, or uh, we're close to the mountains, you know, they move here because the character of the city is interesting. And every time you knock down an historic building, and uh, I've seen many of them destroyed in the years that I've lived here, um, every time you do that, uh, you diminish the value of everybody's seen environment. So I'd like to see the planning board uh, review the status of any project that has to do with historic preservation. Um, and, you know, suggest a cooperative effort among developers, the community, the city, the historic commission, who in many cases, for some reason, because of some of these ordinances has no uh, ability to weigh in on, on the destruction of, of historic buildings. So um, let's try to keep the ones that we have. Maybe if, uh, if some of the historic buildings in the city remain, uh, people will pay even more than seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars for condos downtown. All right, so uh, downtown. we're getting pretty Thank specific you very much. here. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anybody? Uh, thank you, and thank you for that comment. Um, sure. Anybody else uh, wish to have public comment? All right. Uh, Carolyn, do I need to make a motion? Do I need to hear a motion to close public comment, or can I just move along? Yep. Nope, All just right. move along. Okay, moving right along. Um, thank you. Um, so uh, thank you for your patience. I know we're a little behind schedule. Uh, so the first, uh, the 7 p.m. agenda item was the site plan of Michael and Barbara Fisher for a detached third unit at 129 North Street. Uh, and who do we have here to speak on that? Myself, Michael Fisher. All right, thank you. Hi. Hello, everyone. Um, I'll start uh, sharing my screen so we can review the uh, site plan. Can uh, screen sharing be enabled, please? We need to make a motion to start the public hearing. Um, no. You, you, I think we hear the presentation and then we open public hearing. Well, no, I mean, you open the seven o'clock hearing, you, but there's no need to mo make a motion to open the hearing. Your, your patience, everybody, is I, I, I get the rhythm that George just has in his bones. <laughs> um, is everyone able to see uh, the site plan on my screen? Very good. Um, so again, my name is Michael Fisher. My wife is Barbara Fisher. A little bit of history on the property. Um, we bought this property uh, in October of 2019. It is a two family home with uh, a, a garage. Um, we, there are two, two bedroom apartments uh, in the home. Uh, we've uh, fully renovated uh, both of those apartments and uh, we occupy the apartment on the first floor. Um, this project uh, consists of the demolition of the existing garage uh, as shown in this large uh, rectangle here on the property and the construction of a new garage with apartment above it where you can see in the dashed lines. Um, as far as the existing garage is concerned, it is unfortunately no longer structurally viable. The fieldstone uh, foundation walls are collapsing. I had brought an engineer in uh, to consult with him about the possibility of saving the garage and renovating it to an, uh, another unit. And um, the conclusion is that that just is not at all uh, viable. So we began working with the local architect, Mary Yun, to dis, uh, design the proposed uh, garage and apartment. It is approximately uh, 1,056 square feet of living space. Um, with about 384 square feet of garage space. The footprint of the new building is uh, 24 by 30. It is uh, located well within the 10 foot uh, sideline setbacks and the 20 foot setback in the rear of the property. 
um, the height of this building is three feet lower than the height of the main house, let's call it. Um, two points that I wanna make about the location of the uh, new building on the property is that great care was taken to locate it um, with consideration of the views of the neighboring um, houses, specifically this house here and this house here. Um, we've got a lot of room in the back that we could have located the property, but we chose to orient this building closer to the back of the main house and kind of in between the two houses here. So it doesn't obstruct primarily the view of this house, you know, looking out towards the cemetery. The other point I wanted to make about the location of this house is, as you can see, it's actually much further away from the other houses than the existing uh, garages. So let me just scroll down a little bit here. Another view of the property. The driveway will be located along the right-hand side of the property. Uh, there is no new curb cut that's necessary for the driveway. Um, the open space on the property is at 55.3%. Um, there is parking for six cars on the driveway. I'm sorry, five cars on the driveway and a sixth car in the garage, right in this area here. Uh, the utilities for this new building are accessed from the basement of the main house. When we upgraded the uh, electric on the main house, we installed a third electrical meter and panel, an owner's meter. So the provision was made to be able to, to um, access uh, those utilities below ground. Um, the, the sanitary sewer connection will be made right under the existing driveway now. It exits the house to the side near the rear of the house and we'll be able to tie in uh, back there. Um, the front view of the house, looking at it from the street, is as you see it here. Um, the color palette will be in keeping with uh, the neighboring structures. Um, I think it's going to be uh, largely white with uh, a black window trim. So it'll be very, very uh, in common with uh, the main house of the property and other houses around it. Um, it has a, a standing seam metal seam roof that is solar and PV panel ready. Um, there are dark sky compliant uh, lighting fixtures. Let me scroll down here and show you the side view of the property. Um, this is the view um, seen from the neighboring houses. Um, so as you can see the garage doors along the side of the house. There are two downspouts that will drain to footing drains um, and the siding is going to be a combination of uh, James Hardy uh, shingle and vertical panel siding. Rear view of the property shows uh, an elevated deck in the back. And the other side view of the property of the building that faces the cemetery is as you see it here. Um, I think that's it. Are there any questions that anybody has? Um, Carolyn, should I open it up to public comment now or um, should I wait I would, a minute? Uh, yeah, I would um, see if there are any questions from the board and then open it up. I, so, I guess I have Carolyn a question. Carolyn has what? suggested that I see if the board has any questions. So, <laughs> Sam. Um, yeah, so when you, uh, can you access, if there's a problem in the middle of the night, can the people in the apartment deal with the problem? Can they, can they, do they have access to this basement? Do they have where access to the what, please? To the, to the basement where, where, oh. where all of your, where all of yes. your panels are and all that stuff. Yes, they do. There's, there's an entrance to the basement in the front hallway of the main house. Okay. Right. Any, anybody else? Yes, my, my main question is just the, um, 
you know, it really seems like the driveway is getting a lot closer to the other houses. Um, so I'm just wondering how you're handling any kind of screening. Looks like the driveway is going to be three feet off the property line mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the closed condition. So, I, you know, I don't know what that other house looks like, but are, are there any provisions for screening along that property line? What we're planning is um, some ground cover. I think that can be of varying height here. I think we have room to put some um, plants that would provide a screen uh, to answer your question. Um, so I, I think we're gonna have enough of a buffer from the edge of the pavement to the edge of the property where we could accommodate that. that that's what's listed here in the site plan is that's the intention. So the, this uh, shaded line, that, that those are plantings? Uh, yes, right, all along here, yeah. Okay. Have you had any uh, contact with the, with the neighbors? Uh, any, any concerns from them that you, I mean, we'll hear if they're here and they have concerns, but have, have you heard of any? I have not, and I have talked to all of them. I've, I've discussed the site plans with them and uh, walked them around the property and uh, uh, kind of kept them fully uh, aware as the project has progressed. Okay, all right. Um, I will add there was one abutter who um, just sort of noted that they were concerned about um, the sort of loss of their view into the backyard, but understood that, you know, they couldn't protect that. That's in the record, that's in the file, public file cabinet. Mm -hmm. But I just, since you were asking about other, other abutters, that um, is in the mm -hmm. record. Right, yes. Uh, any other questions right now from the, anybody on the, on the planning board? Um, okay, so with that, uh, now do I need a motion to open public comment on this agenda item? Or do I just open? Carolyn? Just open. Um, no, you can just oh, you can just open straight. right away. Okay. Yep. Um, okay. So uh, with that, um, is there? Uh, can we go back to the gal, the Brady Bunch view for the moment? I'm a host. I guess I could do that. Huh? Yeah, I can um, stop the screen share too. I think. I'm going to stop. Just... To my end. Yes, please. We can put it back up if if uh, if we need to. Okay. Can you just hit the stop share? Got it. I get there. You see where it says you're viewing Michael's screen? There should be a stop button there. Um. Not what, what, what I'm looking at. Stop. Here, I got it. Okay. Right. Oh, here we go. Sorry about that. Um, oh. That's okay. Uh, anybody, uh, uh, anybody here to speak on this agenda item? Um, if you can turn your video on and wave your hand, if or you can also use the hand icon on the participant list. Uh, so I'm not seeing any. I'm not seeing anybody. Um, so um, Carolyn, um, if we can can hear from 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 you, we have some yep. notes in the uh, from. Uh, yeah. Office. So there were just. Um, oh, I see a hand. A few but... comments. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. What? Well, yeah. Let me address this. I didn't. I didn't see. Uh, so uh, Mary Scanlon Flynn. I see a hand. Okay, I don't look much like a Mary. I'm Mary. But, <laughs> <laughs> but she does. I, 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 I buy it. Yeah. Um, we just, we just wanted to ask about potential runoff from the, from the driveway that ab abuts our property. And are you the? Um... We're the, we're the small house that car number six in the driveway comes along beside our patio. Okay, well, and then briefly, I didn't ask you, I should have asked you when I recognized you. If you could just state your names and, and your address for the record. Oh, sure. I'm Mary Scanlon Flynn, and I live at 83 Parsons Street. Okay. Uh, all right, and so your question was, uh, so back to Mr. Fisher. 
You're asking about whether or not there's a risk of runoff from the driveway uh, onto your property. Yeah, yeah. And what I would say to that is, um, I believe that the, the grading plan of the driveway is such that it does not run in the direction of your property or the other property that's abutting the driveway. Okay. Um, and uh, if there was any risk of that, I would make provisions to alter the grading so it, it wouldn't put it at risk. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'll take care to make sure that that's not a concern. Okay, great, thanks. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, before I go back, um, I will on that. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say on that same note, Department of Public Works noted that um, for erosion control, which um, relates to drainage and runoff during construction, that um, erosion control measures should be established at the property boundaries. Um, so that mm -hmm. during construction, if there is runoff before the final grades are set, mm -hmm. that that will be captured at the edge of the property. So you could certainly um, include that as a condition that um, uh, that erosion control measures sh um, should be um, installed at the property boundaries prior to um, construction. Yeah, I saw that in that memorandum. I'll make absolutely sure that that is that is that is done. Um, the other comments for DPW just related to the cemetery fence. So I think it pretty, it hmm. could be included as a permit condition, but it's sort of standard practice that, of course, if any damage to cemetery fence during construction um, shall be repaired by the um, applicant. Um, and that um, they had they had a question about potential impact to the trees on the property. There's not there's no construction proposed in and around trees, but that um, a, the board might want to consider that staging and equipment not be um, allowed to be within the critical root zone of those trees. Um, yeah, and that's, and that's fine with me. Um, I, I don't think that uh, it's going to be an issue given the proximity of the trees, but we'll make sure to take that into consideration, you know, and act accordingly. Um. Any, uh, any further comment from the public, anybody? Um, so um, with that, so with that, is there anybody on the, uh, so before I close public comment uh, on this, any anything else uh, from the board to ask of the applicant or anything like that? Um, okay, so hearing then, um, if I can have a motion to close public comment on this agenda item. Move to close public comment. Second. Second. Uh, okay. So. Uh, Is that Chris? Yeah, it was Chris. So. Okay. So I will call. I call the the long long roll. Um. So. Uh. uh Sam. Uh. Yes. Uh. David. Yes. Uh. Chris. Yes. Uh. And I also. Uh, vote yes. So we'll close public comment with that. Um, so <clears throat> just uh, moving on. Um, do uh, so. I'd ask of the board. Do we do we want to make those couple of things a condition? I, I think it, certainly the fence doesn't strike me as something that isn't is needs to be a condition because it's it's clearly would be the responsibility. Uh, but the the tree staging could be you know worth enforcing. Their, their, uh, you know, the applicant's clear, good intentions. Um, oh, uh, all the, we all have closed. I'm sorry, Miss Young. We closed. Yeah, sorry. I, I, I would have called on you. Um, I mean, we can reopen, but if it, unless it's something significant. Okay. Um. So anybody? So I, I think I would move toward. I would uh, uh, be inclined to include the condition about the the staging and protecting the tree. I certainly am, uh, see the good intention here and, and trust that they would do that anyway, but uh, it's always worth in for, you know, holding folks to their good intentions. Okay. Um, any, anybody else? David, Chris, Sam? Okay, so um, hearing no further comment from the board, um, can I have a motion to, uh, uh, pr approve the uh, approve the site plan with the condition about uh, staging and, and tree protection. Anybody? Yes, actually, we could add a 
we could add a uh, condition for the grading that they discussed with the neighbor. Okay. Yeah, I think that seems fair. I understand. I'd like uh, to that we approve this uh, application before us um, with the following conditions. Uh, that, pre that tree protection be provided during construction, that the driveway be graded to direct stormwater runoff away from abutting properties. And I'd also like to add that uh, erosion control measures be um, set up during construction as well. Ah, oh, good catch. Carolyn did also mention that. Do I have a second for that? Okay. Um, okay, so it's been moved and seconded. Um, so Sam, how do you vote? Yes. David Whitehill? Yes. Chris Tate? Yes. And I also vote yes. Looks like a nice project. I'm glad and always glad to see people uh, build an additional housing so close to town. Good luck with your project. Thank you very much. Oh, we're only 23 minutes behind, uh, so I'll go ahead and call the 720 agenda item, uh, which is a site plan by Peter and Sarah Flinker. Uh, to create a second unit at 502 Haydenville Road in Leeds. Uh, who do we have to speak on that? Hello, I'm Peter Flinker. Oh, hi. And we'll let you share your screen. Okay. Uh, whoever's in charge of that. I think that's good. Yep, I could do that. Sorry. Uh, okay, should be good to go. All right. Let me find the right, I'm gonna start with the, um, the overview. Can you see my screen? So this is just the location of the site. This is on Haydenville Road, which is Route 9, um, toward sort of past, we're part of Leeds, but we're kind of in between Leeds and Haydenville. So this is, uh, you've got St. Mary's Cemetery, and then you have uh, one neighbor, and then you have our house, and then you have the electric company. And behind us and across the street is all city land, the Beaverbrook Greenway. So if you see the lower image, this is all an entirely an existing structure. So this is a house from about 1870. It was uh, for a big house, little house, back house barn configuration. And the barn fell down in the snow in uh, 2007. And we uh, decided to rebuild the barn. And then we decided um, to make that uh, kind of the new residence or the new central part of the house. So we moved into the barn in 2015 after eight years of construction. And then the idea was always to turn the older part of the house in the front into an apartment. And then um, in the meanwhile, uh, one of our, our oldest daughter continues to live in the front part of the house. And my wife and I live in the back in the new addition. Anyway, so we're asking for permission under the new uh, two family bylaw, which allows for two family units in this district um, to divide this officially into two units. So that's the, I'll show you the, uh, the photographs. It's probably the easiest way to understand it. So this is um, from the street, the bottom view shows the um, existing older house and the barn is basically on the footprint. We call it the barn, but it's the, the, the main unit now. It's on the footprint of the original barn and you can see in the upper house, the upper photograph, the original house and then the barn, which the original barn was set into a hill. And so we kept that so that the bottom is kind of a walkout basement in the lower level and then we have two floors above that. So essentially we're keeping everything as is. Uh, we're just um, again asking permission to officially have 
uh, an apartment in the front unit. And what that really means is putting in a kitchen because the building department, when we built the new unit in the back, they required us to eliminate the kitchen from the front, which had been there. And uh, so we basically have been sharing the kitchen in the new house. And then the idea is to have a new kitchen in the front. So there's existing parking for uh, at least four cars as required. Um, what you can see here is the two cars that are sort of parked in the back part. And then these are the two spaces that are in the, the front. So the sort of two pullouts where we commonly park as well as a garage where we could park if it wasn't full of stuff. And someday might, might be available for parking. That's my dream. Um, and then, the front part of the house, basically existing uh, house. And then the, this is the view to the north. So part of this, we put in new mini splits to replace an old uh, oil burner. And um, that's gonna be screened behind fencing ultimately. And it's already pretty much invisible from the street. So the site plan, which you have, uh, basically we have Haydenville Road, um, we have the existing driveway, the front unit, which is two stories and one and a half stories and a shed, and then the back unit, which is two and a half stories. And then, as I said, two parking spaces next to the, the old house and then two parking spaces off the driveway. And that's um, pretty much the story. All right, very good. Um, and, and congratulations, I think this is our first application on the two family by right, isn't it? <laughs> yep. Um, anybody on the, any, I'll, I'll go first to the planning board. Does anybody have any questions for the applicant? No, no. All right. Um, so, I've ever seen, in my opinion. Do what? I said this is the most straightforward thing I've ever seen, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, it's it is pretty straightforward. Oh, um, also, uh, I, I will uh, go back and uh, tag back something that I should have said earlier. Um, this agenda item and the previous agenda item were, uh, uh, and all the future <laughs> agenda items for the the night are uh, were posted in the Gazette on April 29th and May 6th. So I uh, just want to cover my base. I may say it again just to make sure, but um, that this is, this was uh, posted. Um, so with that, um, I would open it up and see if anybody in the, in the public here has any um, comment about this or uh, about this applicant application. All right, very, seems, seems, seems all quiet. Um, so um, I, I guess I will, I'm gonna start, I'm not gonna, uh, I'm gonna close everything all at once uh, just in case anybody pops up with a question. So, so I'll ask the planning board one more time. Oh, and Carolyn, sorry, Carolyn, we wanna hear from Carolyn. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, there were no comments from DPW, so I don't really have any additional, I mean, this is a very straightforward permanent application, you know, reusing the existing space, it definitely fits within the, um, you know, it's one of the ways that um, the two family by right was envisioned to be utilized using um, existing um, buildings and, and reconfiguring the interior space. Of course, also additions are part of that as well. But given that there's no footprint expansion and it's all interior reorganization, I think that makes it um, that much simpler. All right, very good. Uh, so I will ask one more time um, if there's any comment from the board or the public. Okay, so uh, seeing seeing none, do I have a motion to uh, to close public comment? So moved. I think David, second. Anybody? There's only three of you that can do this, so I really need y'all to can. step up. <laughs> All right, thanks. I Chris seconded that. Um, so with that, uh, I will go in a different order. So Chris. Yes. Uh, David. Yes. Sam. 
Yes. And I also concur. So I'll close uh, that. Um, I've asked a, a few times now, so I'm going to speak now forever, hold your peace from the board uh, for, if uh, anybody has any further comment. Um, and if, so if they don't, if somebody could make a motion to... I move to close public comment. But, uh, we just did that, Sam. Uh, so I mean, now I, mean, I need a motion I to, to, I mean, to approve to, the plan. To approve the plan, that's what I meant. Okay. Do I have a second? Okay. So Sam moved. Second. Chris second. Chris, Chris beat you to it. Chris seconded. Um, okay. So, uh, so motion to approve the site plan. Um, no added conditions. Uh, Chris. Yes. David. Yes. And Sam. Yes. And I also concur. Yes. Congratulations to the inaugural two family by right site plan approval. <laughs> Thank you very much. Very good. And uh, um, seven fifty. We do not have. I am just going to see if I can um, take one more moment to connect with um, Melissa to see if she could pop in by any small chance. All right. Um, well, the next thing isn't until so, we have caught up uh, in time almost entirely. And the next agenda item is until 810. So we have a, a, a couple of minutes. So we will try and see if we can okay. make this quorum happen. Yeah, we also can do other items. If you just give me one second. Um, let's see. Um, Um, okay, so um, why don't we do the other items um, for the moment while I um, um, see if I can get in touch with um, Melissa. So by other items, you mean the um, ARs? Yes, and the minutes. Okay. Um, so let me pull those up. Oops. Let's see. Okay. So um, I thought I had one of these up here, but let's just go. Um, okay, the first one I'll pull up is Kennedy Road. Um, and this is just a land uh, purchase, uh, essentially. So there's no new lot being created. I'm gonna share my screen and show you this. Um, Oh, did it show up? Are you seeing the plan on the screen? Yep. Or no? Yep, we're seeing. Okay. Okay. Um, so this is on Kennedy Road. I'm just gonna, I'm having a problem with my cursor here. Okay. Um, and there's a, just a small, a 15,000 square foot um, portion of this very large, you know, five plus acre lot. Um, so there'll be a land transfer of this um, rectangle um, from this property on parcel one, one to two. So because it's a change of um, land within a parcel, um, that's what triggers the approval not required um, request for endorsement by the planning board. Um, it's noted that um, this is not considered a building lot and it's really just going to be swapped from one property owner to the other. So I just need approval, um, a vote on endorsing this as an A&R plan. 
move to endorse the NR uh, on uh, Kennedy Road. Second. All right. Uh, so so, uh, Chris. So that was moved by Sam and second by Chris. Uh, so Chris, how do you vote on this thing? That yes, uh, approve. Yeah. <laughs> endorse. We endorse. Uh, David, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, Sam. Yes. Yeah. And and I also because I must vote yes. <laughs> yes. I will you always vote. I must okay. vote yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. I am looking for the next one. Here is on Baker Hill Road. Um, let's see. Okay, um, and let me just pull up the ANR. Okay, I'm gonna zoom out the screen a little bit. Okay, so um, this is um, this is. I'm going to zoom out a little bit on this screen so you can get sort of the bigger picture. But there are some lots at the very top of Baker Hill Road that when originally approved, the frontage that um, was created actually went down the back side of the hill to Riverside Drive. Um, and so that's what these flagpoles are in this, in this plan here, these 50 foot wide. Um, uh, flagpoles that went down to Riverside Drive and those created the frontage for all the lots surrounding this, um, what was initially approved um, through special permitting and site plan back in the 80s, I think it was, for a lot of these large lots at the top of Baker Hill. Um, about five years ago, I think it was 20, I can't remember what year we're in, it was about four or five years ago, um, there was a petition for the city to accept this section of Baker Hill Road. Um, it was only a public street, a certain part of the way up Baker Hill Road. And um, a f about four years ago, uh, the petition was put forward to the city to accept this whole rest of Baker Hill Road where there's this um, turnaround. And so in doing that, the city did vote, city council had, um, voted to accept this portion of Baker Hill Road. And so the whole length of Baker Hill Road is now a public street. Um, the city um, accepted that and by doing that, that creates frontage along Baker Hill Road for all of these lots, which makes all of these flagpoles unnecessary going forward because the frontage can now officially be taken from a city accepted street frontage of Baker Hill Road. So what this applicant is doing, the lot is over here um, and their flagpole stretched across or under what was previously just a driveway. And so they're going to essentially cut off the flagpole that went down to Riverside Drive and then sell the flagpole to the abutting property owner because they no longer need the flagpole for frontage. So that's what this um, a and is about. People are so creative. And why, why are they doing all that? Um, well, if you can imagine your, you know, your part of your lot is across the street and runs between two other property owners lots all the way down to Riverside Drive. That makes it pretty difficult for maintenance. You are obligated as the property owner to maintain this whole stretch of lot that goes all the way down. So it makes it it simplifies the plan that makes it easy for everybody to read and look at, but also in terms of maintenance um, for that um, portion of the property. You don't want to shovel 50 feet of sidewalk on Riverside Drive anymore. Exactly. <laughs> no. uh, yeah, that's my question. Are those uh, 50 feet of uh, on, around the corner being being adequately shoveled? Uh, please don't. Uh, uh, that's a high. That's a rhetorical question. I don't actually want to know the answer to that. There's there's uh, no shovel. 
Well, there's no sidewalk. Might not be sidewalk. There's, there's no sidewalk. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So with that, do I hear a motion to uh, yeah, um, I'm, I'm endorse this? Move we approve. In second. Second. All right. So moved by David, seconded by Chris. Uh, Chris, how do you okay. uh, vote? Vote oh, yes to endorse. David? Yes. Uh, Sam? Yes. Um, I guess the yogurt high is worn off, Sam. That was, that was very soft. Um, yeah. Marissa, no, yeah. Uh, me, yeah. I also <laughs> vote to endorse. Yes. Uh, so? OK. The final A and I actually have another A and R um, that is um, has been submitted by the DPW. This parcel um, is actually. Do you see parcel B on your screen? Um, so um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. This is actually um, an eleven thousand or almost 12,000 square foot parcel near the intersection of Elm and Main Street, the back side of the Smith Volk farm field where the apple orchard is. It's where the um, family services, that what you call it, um, is located. And um, the city is um, going to carve off this parcel for the purposes of the nonprofit entity that occupies this house. So essentially just um, surplusing this parcel so that then they can formally hand it over um, so they have a full you know deed as opposed to a lease to um, this building um, by the city so um, it does create a new lot um, but no new structures are planned because the structure is already there all right any questions from the, the board anybody Okay, um, so do I hear a motion to accept this ANR uh, on or endorse this ANR on 593 Elm Street? I move to endorse the ANR on 590, 593 Elm Street. Second, anybody? Second. All right. Um, so, uh, Chris, how do you vote? Yes. David? I think I heard him say yes. And Sam? Yes, yes, yes. And I also vote to endorse. OK. So um, unfortunately, I have not heard back from Melissa, So, which means she's probably deep in healthcare um, world right now. Um, so just to reiterate for everyone here, and uh, including the planning board members, um, I think we've had a um, technical difficulty with um, George being able to call in um, to the meeting. I thought we had um, a quorum for the 750. The issue is the 750 item is a special permit which requires five um, unanimous uh, or five votes uh, positive to approve a special permit. Um, that's a super majority of the seven and that's required by state statute. Um, site plan approvals only require four um, votes, which is why you could continue with the other items on your agenda. Um, we don't have um, uh, five people at the moment, which means that um, we'd have to continue the hearing um, to May 26th. Seventh, I think is the next possible hearing date, um, May 27th. Um, and so far, I don't see why we would have a problem. There was just sort of a confluence of bad events that happened in the last um, week or so. Um, so um, I'm, you know, I, it was something that was, you know, um, not. Um, uh, it's so unusual or unknown in this moment that we, yeah. uh, that we, the people are away. It's a, it's a return to a quorum juggling that, that of, of a, of a, of another era, I think. 
Right. Um, can I ask, Karen? Right. Um, I am assuming we can't we can't uh, sort of leave it and see if uh, if we get that fifth person and and move it to the end. It just has to be continued at this point if we don't have the quorum. Yeah, I mean, if the if I mean, the applicant there... wants to do that, I guess. Yeah, I mean, there's certainly no, um, there's no harm. You could sort of um, continue it till the last item. So you could start by, um, so the, the, we have two other items, one scheduled for 810 and one scheduled for 830. So um, you, um, if for instance, you could continue it till um, 8, 40 or 8:45, and give a little bit more time to see if I can get a response. Um, um, I'm not necessarily hopeful because the one issue I know that there was, you know, there's a con there's a health issue yeah. in <laughs> involved, and so I don't want to assume that that's going to happen. You certainly have the prerogative to do that if the applicant wants to do that, or you can just go ahead and continue it to May 27th. We actually have an open agenda for that meeting. So you could put them right up at 7 p.m. and there's nothing that would come before them. They could come, you know, be right up first off on the agenda. Right. Um, so Mr. Broadbent, uh, I'm sorry, Hi. I know you, you've been here. Uh, I, I, it's okay to ask, right, Carolyn? Yeah, okay. yeah absolutely, um, yeah. Sorry, you know, I'm just, the, the open, open meeting law, I really <laughs> trying to make sure I don't, uh, run afoul. Um, so Mr. Broadbent, I, as you can hear, it, it, it's not looking promising that we're going to get that quorum, but I, you know, I, I'm guessing we wouldn't have an objection to uh, waiting. Uh, I mean, we can't wait, we have to proceed, but um, with you waiting and seeing, but it, I, it doesn't sound, it doesn't sound promising. Uh, and I will, to the extent that we've asked this other planning board meeting to get on, if she can, given the circumstances, I, I think I'd I would prefer that we not ask her to do that unless she, uh, you know, just really is able to, but, but we would, you are on the agenda. And so I would ask, I would ask you if you would like to try and wait or not. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, Eric President 95 Barron to currently, and um, I'm here with my wife, Susie McRae and our site planner, um, Jeff Squire from Berkshire Design Group. I, I think we'll, one of us will hang in uh and just wait off off camera and uh muted just to see it's we have everything queued up we were delayed once and so you know maybe good things will happen so thank you for um your consideration on that okay all right thank you and and uh again we we do apologize it's uh it is a like i said a throwback to a different time where people are actually being out of town and there's some health considerations and i I think we have a member who's taking maybe in the middle of exams uh, and, and uh, things like that. So, uh, so I appreciate your patience and uh, notwithstanding my pessimism. Yeah, Chris. Um, should we just ask if there's anyone, anyone else from the public who wants to uh, speak on that project and just to let them know that we might be hanging out. I mean, I guess they're hearing it, but just so they know there's yeah. a um, I, I think they're hearing this conversation. So if they're looking to speak, that uh, they're looking to speak or, or hear on it, then they, at their, at their peril, I guess, uh, of their of their time, um, are, are certainly free to 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 hang out and wait. Um, okay. So with that, um, well, when do we go to the next? Uh, oh, so eight. 10. Oh, so it's 810. It's 810 now. It's 811. Yeah. Uh, so we will go to the 810 uh, agenda item. So this, which is a site plan for the second curb cut at uh, 415 North Farms Road uh, in Florence. And we have the Macklers here, I think. You have Fred and Sue Mackler here. Yeah. And also Robert Bollinger as a public comment when I get a minute to speak. All right, very good. We will open up public comment uh, after the presence, the presentation. I'm asking for a curb cut in a spot where there never was a curb. So it's kind of an odd request. For well over 100 years, the Volinger family farmed the hayfields that we now own. 
and they gained access to it directly on North Farms Road. Our home has frontage on the north side and on the south edge of our property. Our driveway is on the north side and the south side edge is where the farm equipment has always accessed the field. We've lived there for thir nearly 36 years and Bob Vollinger and his father, John, before that have always hayed this field. And now North Arms Road was repaved, which it barely needed. And in the process, a curb was placed there, which makes it very difficult or impossible for Bob to bring his equipment in, which he does maybe six times a year. Uh, you wanna see a screen share of the plot? I mean, you should be able to bring it up. Uh, yes, please. Just to get permission. Right. Can you Carolyn see it? Or... No. Uh, no. Did you? If you're who is trying to share? Macklers. Yeah. So I did give you permissions. If you're having trouble sharing, I can also, um, I've pulled up your plans on my screen. I'd be happy to put it up. Thank you. If that works. Thanks. Okay. Um, can you see that? It's just, yep. Um, so this is the area of the curb cut. Yes. Uh, the existing driveway is here and the existing home is here. So I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit. Okay. Um, so I don't, so the issue here is that a second curb cut requires a site plan approval by the planning board. Again, it's a, a simple majority approval, um, but there's the requirement, um, regardless of whether there were never curbs on North Farms Road, the city made an investment to um, rebuild North Farms Road and at that time created curbs for specific drainage um, to go certain locations and um, curb openings are granted one per property unless special permission is granted by the um, planning board and the standard is um, that the curb um, that more than one curb cut can be uh, granted um, if it um, is um, um, improves the safety within the network, essentially. The um, site plan review criteria is that, um, um, that there's something unique about the property that would otherwise render flow to and from the property unsafe and unmanageable. And if the board finds that more than one curb cut is necessary for traffic safety purposes, um, um, and additional site mitigation may also be incorporated as part of um, the planning board's uh, review. Well, I guess if a hay wagon tipped over trying to negotiate this high curb, that would create a traffic hazard and we could maybe qualify under the traffic and safety clause. And um, me entering and having to slow down, not being able to enter the field like I used to be able slowing down the approach and climb up over the curb is going to be blocking traffic a lot longer. Um, a question that I have is that when the city went in and, and added these curbs were, uh, I mean, is there any process for, um, uh, for property owners to weigh in or ask uh, at at that time, um, uh, sort you know, sort of notice that they might need to ask for a, a permit at that time before the curbs go in. Because now, I mean, like it's one thing to be like design I, it in the curb cut; it's another thing um, to. And this is a question for Carolyn. So if you um, 
it's another thing to having now a hat put it in to now you know kind of tear up the road and uh and 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 undo some of the work that was done so yeah. that's a, i think a question for carolyn if, if you know um i don't know the specific process i do know that um you know where there are where there are driveways um, um, and access points for homes, that's where the curb openings are created. So given this is a, um, you know, not a situation that is used very infrequently, it's not surprising to me that um, during the construction phase that, um, that DPW didn't plan to create an extra curb because it's in at that point it's considered an extra opening um, it's right by a wetland there's um, an electric utility pole um, they were planning drainage there there's a catch basin um, so there certainly wouldn't have been a reason for um, uh, dpw to um, to be able to um, to know that they would should consider a curb opening in that location mm -hmm. but no uh sort of automatic notice i mean because my question is or i guess my thinking is it's like it's not it's certainly not the case that they would be like oh you just want another curb cut so we'll design it in um if that wasn't but but to make their application at that time before um before the curb if, if i can weigh in david arbeiman sure. with rachel nay smith um, well, hold on just a second. Um, I want to make sure that the board that um, um, there aren't any other questions by the board and then you maybe Yeah, we'll come back to you in just up. one second. Um, yeah. Sure. Uh, anybody else from the Is, is there board? any documentation of sort of the pattern of use of this space prior to 2000? What year was the rebating? 2020? Yeah, the, it was 2020. The only documentation of use okay. is that we are a registered farm and that was the, always the access and never would we have imagined that a curb would be put in there. There are several properties on North Farms Road where there was a second access point for farm equipment and no curb was put in to, to block their second access. So and no, we were not asked beforehand. So um, it was a very big surprise to us that a curb was put there. So can I ask the equipment that has to go in there? I mean, tractors, I would guess, could generally could navigate a curb pretty well. Is there is there something I'm not understanding about this particular equipment or? Um, Bobby Bollinger is the person who finds yeah, it for us. Yeah, I'll, least... I'll, I'll speak on that. So previously, before this curb, there used to be just a little berm of about two and a half, three inches of dirt where the water did not go in. By raising that curb six inches, you now put another berm behind that to the dirt built up behind that berm to hold the berm back that comes back. So now there's a lot steeper grade coming down off of the road into the field and the grade was so steep coming into the field before prior to that six inch berm being installed that coming in and out, I dragged the hitch of my bailing and other pieces of equipment to coming in and out of there. This spring, the fertilizer spreader that I usually rent to, to fertilize my hay fields, I was unable to even enter into the field because I knew it would drag going into the field and drag coming out of the field. So I had to use a special three-point hitch fertilizer spreader that I could pick up and only put it about 400 pounds in at a time and the field took 1500 pounds of fertilizer. So that took me a lot more time coming in and out of that field and it's just a lot more aggravation with that curb cut. And, and just one other thing I'd like to mention about curb cuts in um, up the street from me at house number 480, there was a section of curb that they had that was put in on North Farms Road. And two days later, it was removed because they wanted the people park their car on their lawn. 
and they already have one curb cut as an access, but there, there was probably about a 14 foot section of curbing that was removed for them that they only have, I don't think they have two acres of land and they already have a curb cut. I don't know how they got their section of curbing removed so quickly. Uh, yeah, right, well, it's hard to speak to that. Um, can I ask, is there, um... Uh, is there access from the parcel to the north? Are there other areas to enter from? So if I enter down Fred's driveway, he has a driveway where the water comes down his driveway, comes from his driveway into the field. So the water runoff, I can't go down and enter from on the edge of the field because the water from his driveway runs onto the edge of the field and my heavy equipment sinks in and makes ruts in the field. I don't pay closer to his driveway because I can't because the water runoff from his driveway. So I can't access through his driveway property. Um, I, I think any... I think Marissa is asking about from the north part of your parcel. From the north part of my parcel? No, it's the like north by part where of the parcel. house is. That's where the driveway that he's talking and about that's is. That's the driveway that I'm talking about. If I, I can't access through, I could go down his driveway, but when I come off of his driveway into the field, the, the runoff from the water from the driveway, when it rains, is too, it, it, you know, like, just like a road runs off blacktop and into the field there. And when I right. go in with my heavy equipment, I sink out of sight, create ruts and make a mess. Okay. That's why we've always come in from the other parcel. Okay. Uh, any other questions from the board right now? Okay. Um, I have a hypothetical so, for Carolyn. If they Chris. if they did an ANR for that rectangle or for that square piece, would that get them a curb cut by right? Um, they can't do an A and R because they don't have enough um, uh, frontage for that. This um, area requires 175 feet of frontage. They are actually have been contemplating creating a flag lot um, or two flag lots, but using the existing driveway as a shared driveway um, to a second proposed lot. And that's because they don't have 175 feet of clear frontage for each parcel. Mm -hmm. and, and in fact, this the city would not likely approve any kind of driveway there. So certainly using six times a year for agricultural purposes to run a tractor through this area um, would could continue. But formalizing a driveway um, and through a cut, the driveway itself would not be allowed to be constructed, only a curb opening because the wetlands and uh, perennial stream are right there. Are there any um, restrictions that you know of um, off of the driveway by the property where this runoff is, where the property owners couldn't uh, improve that area in some way to um, allow for tractor access from their uh, garage, I mean, from their garage, from their parking, uh, from their driveway, I'll come up with the word eventually, from their driveway, you know, by, by improving drainage or uh, anything like that? Is there any restriction because of the wetlands that I, this is a question for Carolyn first, and then I'll, I'll ask the applicant. So at the end of the existing driveway that goes to the house, are there any wetlands restrictions? Yeah, that you know of, I, if, if you do. Not, not that have been flagged, so I don't know. It could very well just be that there's a soil saturation and it's just wet. Um, because of the grade and the drainage, I okay. don't know. So, so then I would ask the applicant that question: Is there any reason why you you couldn't improve your your property from from that point to create an access point for the? I don't think it can be done. Equipment? It's a very steep driveway down, and it, the runoff is into the field, but it isn't wetlands there. So, at the bottom of the driveway, all the water from the driveway from North Farms is going down into the bottom into the field. Mm -hmm. And also so, the, sorry, also ahead, the Tom. incline from the driveway 
that they have going down into the field where I would be accessing is a lot steeper than where I would be entering from the lower section on North Farms Road. I would run into the same problem, dragging the hitch of the baler and equipment up that steeper hill. And it being, it's, it's just soil. So going up a, a hill when it's wet, if I start sinking in or slipping with the tractor, I'm spinning and I'm, I'm creating ruts. Sure. Um, okay, any, any uh, for the moment, last questions uh, from the planning board? Okay, so hearing none, I will uh, hear uh, public comment. So I come back to, uh, so if you can state your name and your address uh, for the record, please. Okay. And that's David and Rachel that I see. Uh, David R. Byman, I'm at, and Rachel Nay Smith, 357 North Farms Road. So um, our property is right next to our house, is right next to where the proposed curb cut is. And I should say that over the years, um, you know, tractors have gone up there. It's never created a problem for us. Um, and I understand the concerns that are being raised. Um, you know, we, we would have absolutely no objection to a curb cut there as long as it was just for agricultural purposes. I understand that they're contemplating building some houses up there and want to make sure that no construction uh, in, the, you know, in that, through that curb cut. That's my comment. Mm. Okay. Um, anybody else? Uh, oh, Mr. Uh, Downey Meyer. Yeah, Downey Meyer. Yep, Downey Meyer, um, five sixteen North Farms Road. Uh, just to address your earlier comment, um, there was no notice process as to curb cuts. Uh, I walk, I've lived at 516 North Farms Road, uh, which is about a half mile up the hill from this property um, since 2005. I walk this road virtually every day. Um, the curbs are completely haphazard as to how they're put in. In some places, it seems, uh, I was also for eight years on the Northampton Conservation Commission. So as this was built out, I was looking at it from a wetlands perspective. Um, there's actually 200 meters of the east side of the road above the Arbeitman driveway um, that has no curbs whatsoever. So the, if the rationale here is that we're somehow preventing siltation, which is one of the things in the city ordinance, um, there's actually quite a bit of gravel that's been mobilized on the eastern part where the city did not finish the job properly that's ending up in the storm sewer. Um, I've also noted and thought about calling Sarah LaValle during the winter season um, quite a bit of silt that's flowed out of unstabilized um, dirt that was not properly seeded and loamed. Um, so, um, so there really was no process and in, in some parts of, you know, some parts it's been left out, some parts it's been included. Um, the, the other thing is, you know, just to follow up with um, what Mr. Bollinger said about, again, some curb cuts were preserved. Uh, so my neighbor has four curb cuts um, and those were preserved. Uh, and again, other, other people uh, had curb cuts restored after they were put in. Um, so from, you know, from my perspective as someone who walks the road every day, the agricultural use of the road is actually a traffic, you know, traffic calming, um, the equipment moving up and down the road. Um, people, slow, you know, people slow down if there's more activity. Um, Again, as a, as a person who's been on the Wetlands Commission, uh, if you look at the property, the Mackler property, um, one of the things is you're within 200 feet of the perennial stream there and you're within, you know, you're pretty close to the, the BVW boundary. So again, to, to say that you could do some improvements on the Mackler property, um, again, I think raises, raises questions about the impact on wetlands at that end. Um, as far as you know, looking looking at the grades um, where the previous curb cut you know curb cut was, um, it was built up quite a bit. And again, one of the things I've noticed is that there was probably a two to three foot wide gravel strip um, put on the outside of the curb. At this point, that gravel is going to end up in the brook at a certain point because it's not stabilized at all. 
Um, so I, I, you know, I think of this as being something that would really have a minimal impact. It could be done with a, a low, uh, low curb that again would allow Bob to um, exit and enter the, the property when he needed to do the work that he does. Um, and again, I, you know, these are, these are two people who've been extraordinarily sensitive to the, the agricultural property. Um, the Macklers undertook a good deal of wetlands, um, yet restoration and invasives control on their property a number of years ago. Um, so I would have as a you know, resident um, full confidence that they would do this in a way that would be sensitive to the um, adjacent stream and that they would maintain it in a way that would make it work for agriculture and would, again, not provide you know, any kind of hazard to traffic on this road. Uh, I, it seems like, I, I mean, I'm more concerned, I mean, as long as it, it sounds like there's some unevenness here and, and making it so that they can get the tractor, their, their equipment in makes sense. I just don't know how to, how to do that. Um, and make sure that it can't be used for future development. Well, you certainly could condition a permit that states that they are allowed to do to create an opening in accordance with DPW standards. And DPW did give some um, um, uh, comments about the lack of detail and, and that would be needed to create such a thing. But as one of the other um, public comments. Um, there um, that you heard, you could condition the permit to say this curb opening is only for access for agricultural vehicles for the purposes of um, farming the property. Um, and no other improvements are permitted as part of the permit, as part of that um, allowance for the curb opening. So it's strictly just an opening and no other grading or pavement or any other kind of um, um, change to that um, surface can be done without coming back to the planning board. Uh, you know, that's even besides what kind of permits um, might be triggered by the Conservation Commission and the Wetlands Protection Act. Is that for any of those type of improvements? Can I can I ask the applicants what they think of that idea? That's fine. Um, we have no intention of putting a driveway there. Um, for any other purpose other than to let the farm be um, farmed. Um, yeah. We are planning to have a shared driveway at the far end, but that is that has nothing to do with this end. This is just a coincidence of timing that both that items are being discussed at the same time. You'll see us again in the future because our son is hoping to build a house. We have 30 acres and somehow we're trying to find room for one more building lot. Uh, cool. I'm excited. And it will be the guys. other. It will be the other end, and it will be coming off our driveway at the north end, and it'll be in, in back of our house essentially. So we have no plans for the south end except putting the farm equipment in. All right. Great. Well, keep that sun away from you. It's too close. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he has a he has a son, so I have a grandson. <laughs> All right, there it is. <laughs> There's there, the real yeah. reason. Right. Um. Any uh, further comment from the, um... oh, Chris? Well, I, I wanna start out by saying, um, I really feel for you guys, uh, you know, you're farming your land and then all of a sudden a curb gets put in where there never was one. I completely understand your predicament here. Um, I am having a little bit of trouble with the lack of detail and so the one thing I'm worried about is um, they did put in the curb and there's a catch basin right there. Um, so I can't tell if that's a, like a local depression in the road. Um, and maybe that's my fault for not going out there and, and getting my eyes on it this week. So I apologize. Um, but I'm just worried about, you know, this, the stormwater effects, especially that close to a, to a stream. So I just don't know if, you know, if the curb's there for a reason or not. And that could be why there's a curb on your section of road where maybe there's not curbs on other sections of road because that's part of the stormwater design for, for the road. Um, so I just feel like I don't quite have enough information to, uh, to act at this point. So Carolyn, 
So you just to let you know about the DPW comments and let everybody know the applicant has seen these. Um, DPW noted the same lack of detail and concern. Um, you could certainly um, um, incorporate uh, um, some of their comments as conditions. So they're requesting that the northern limit of the curb um, opening be a minimum of five feet from the utility pole and 10 feet from um, a, a speed sign. Um, provide details about um, how they're going to cut and remove the curb and um, you know the, the angle at which the curb needs to be cut um, and protection of the catch basin during that um, um, period of construction. Um, and then some a condition about grading um, of the apron so that it rises along the existing curb alignment to maintain the gutter drainage. You could certainly incorporate that. And if for some reason they can't ma ma match all of those, then they, and, and they um, go to the, and DPW will require a trench permit and um, um, other oversight during this process. So if they can't meet those standards, then they could either come back for an amendment or maybe they have to um, not have a curb opening there. So there, I mean, there's a way you can set parameters about how they do the curb opening along with the condition that it only be used for agricultural purposes. I can tell you this was not or a spot access. where water ever collected prior to this curb being put because the drainage is such that it stays in the road or goes into the catch basin. Uh, in my opinion, the curbs that were put in were haphazard to be put in without any thought to where they were gonna put them because there's no reason to have a curb there based on the way the land sits, where the stream is and the way the water flows. But you can right. have the experts look at it and that's just my opinion, having lived there for 36 years. Yes, pr prior to this, like I've been saying, there was a lip there. And, you know, not to bring this up, but we're, we're worried about the water entering the, you know, off the runoff and in that 15 foot straightaway that I'd like the section of curb removed. But yet along North Farms Road, I have 1,500 feet of other farm fields that the water comes on directly into my field and is washing my field out, but I, there's nothing I can do. I, and that's a whole nother issue, I understand. But we're just saying, I was, it was stated that, you know, the 15 foot cutout, you know, letting water in there, but yet down the road, there's 1500 feet of water runoff into my fields that eventually make it to Fitzgerald's Lake in the same aspect. Maybe not a perennial stream in your field. I think there's, I think, I think there's definitely a way to do, uh, you know, a couple inch curb or something that you could work with DW, DW to design the curb cut to make sure that not all of the water from North Farms Road is going into this new curb cut and is some still going to the catch basin that I guess they just put in. It seems like it's something that's not uh, rocket science to figure out. So it seems kind of clear uh, that this should be, to me at least, that should be allowed. I mean, the fact that it's not 175 seat, uh, feet for a frontage, if you look at the houses around, there's barely any houses that have lots with 175 foot frontage over there. So it seems like a totally arbitrary criteria. So it seems very clear that this was probably its own lot at some point in the past anyway. So um, I think the issues are gonna be with CONSCOM and I don't think we should try to be CONSCOM here and let them give these people uh, their own trouble. I, I completely concur with David. Um, well, so I'm going to, uh, does anybody else have any questions for the applicants at this point in time? Okay. So if I can have a motion to close uh, a public hearing. If we close public hearing. All right. Thanks, Chris. Second, anybody? Second. All right. Um, so uh, on the motion to close public hearing, uh, Chris. Yes. And Sam. Yes. Uh, and David. Yes. And I also vote yes to close public hearing. Um, does anybody else have anything to... Uh, yeah. to add? Um, from the planning board. 
So, so, I, uh, so my question, oh, uh, go ahead, David. I'm sorry, I'm having a real lag here. So um, I just think with regard to these conditions, um, it seems like there's so much wetlands issues around here that it's that's going to be the critical issue with what you can build here for any future thing. And and honestly, if you can honestly, if you can put a driveway here that goes to a house, they have 30 acres there. Why shouldn't they put a house? I don't understand why give them such a hassle about it. I mean, the wetlands issue needs to be figured out, but that's not our job. Yep. Um. So what are uh? Carolyn, or, or is that part of public comment? You look like you have something to say, Carolyn, but maybe I'm. Oh, no, I, yeah, I mean, the question before you is just the curb opening. Um, right. There is access for, there's no question that there's a path for another house lot, even though that's not in front of you right now. It's just the driveway for that house lot can't be located within 200 feet of the wetland. So driveway access has to be somewhere else. But that's not part of the discussion now. It's really more about, um, you know, defining whether or not you think it's appropriate to have a curb opening here for agricultural purposes, as has been presented. I, I move. I move to support uh, the allowance of a curb cut for agricultural reasons, to, and that they must uh, take into consideration the DPW's comments uh, for the creation of said curb cut well i so uh, i have a i mean a question of taking into consideration seems like not a pretty uh, a pretty mushy condition uh is there something firmer that we can say about that You know, the DPW is very specific. I don't know if you want to incorporate I, their I, I thought their I said, I said, I said DPW's text. Okay, so make make their, so not take into consideration, but to make their yeah, thank you. comments, a, a, if we can phrase it yeah. affirmatively thanks, as, as thanks, a condition. Lawyer. Okay. Thanks, lawyer. Thanks, lawyer. Thanks, lawyer. Thanks, lawyer. <laughs> you know, it's what I do. It's, it's what I do. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Yes, okay. that's. Uh, to uh, uh, I, I move to support the uh, curb cut for agricultural use uh, that incorporates the uh, the text and cons and um, comments of the DPW as as conditions regarding the design. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, do I hear a second? That. Second? Um, all right. Um, so Chris, how do you vote? Yes. And Sam, how do you vote? Yes. David? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a little torn, but I'm going to go with yes. Congratulations. <laughs> you have a curb cut. No. Please use it wisely that. and protect. Yeah, so you have, you know, assuming you, you have, get it designed you have a, you have a long uh, according to the conditions. And... You have a long conversation with DBW. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thanks. For Bobby, thanks. I'm sure he's still on. Yeah. All right. Thanks. All right. So it's now 8.45. Uh, okay. So we're, we fell a little bit behind schedule. So we're going to go uh, to the 8.30. Um, Oh, we were doing so well, and now we and still we fell behind. Um, so uh, eight thirty. I just want to. Oh, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to interject that I think we will have a quorum for the um, broadband hearing. Oh, so okay. if we want to go ahead and move for this one, and then you can go to the other one. Um, I just need a fifteen minute heads up. Okay. To uh, Melissa. Okay, I'm not sure how precisely we can give that, but we'll we'll give it a try. Right. Well, I'll figure it out. I just wanted to let you know that I think we can go forward with the hearing after the 830 item. Okay. All right. So the 830 item is the site plan for shared driveway by new uh, applicant is the New Way Homes at 291 Riverside Drive in Florence. And who do we have here for Mr. Hensel? Uh, anybody okay, else for that? Yeah, John Hansel, New Way Homes, East Long Island, Massachusetts. 
uh, here tonight for the shared driveway. But uh, first, I want to thank the board for its time. Seems like my meetings go a little bit longer than most. But I'm going to pass this on to Attorney O'Hara, who will do the presentation for me. And uh, so I am Ryan O'Hara of Bacon Wilson here on behalf of uh, John Hansel and New Way Homes. Uh, first, Attorney Elkins, fine job stepping in as a uh, chair this evening. I'm sure that's uh, hard to adjust to on the fly. And I'll reiterate what John said, which is uh, thank you all for your time. I know we tend to bring a little more drama with us than the ordinary application maybe, but I think we have a pretty straightforward thing for you tonight. Uh, if I could be given permission to share my screen, I'd be happy to put some, some plans in front of you. Uh, you're ready. Oh, okay, great. Um, bear with me, it's pretty embarrassing, but I don't necessarily have the smoothest uh, track record of actually using this thing. So we should be looking at uh, a proposed plot plan that actually shows three driveways here. Is everybody seeing what I am? Or could one person confirm that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So uh, this is not what's before you tonight, but what I want to make clear is this plot plan here in front of you was uh, an A&R plan that reflects what could be done with these properties as of right without ever coming before you. And what you'll see here is three different homes with three different driveways, one coming off of Riverside and two coming off in pretty close proximity to each other of Liberty Street. However, what we're here for tonight is an application for site plan review of a proposed shared driveway. And the initial plot plan for that I'm showing you now. So as you'll see here, the access to all three of these properties has been relocated to come off of one curb cut on Liberty Street. Uh, that will lead to a common driveway that serves all three of these properties. But the final plot plan that's actually before you this evening is this updated, slightly updated plan where this third house down here was moved back from the Riverside Drive frontage a significant amount. So as to allow this maple tree over here, uh, which is shared along the boundary of the abutting neighbor over here to be maintained instead of uh, removed because where the house was originally proposed, even with this shared driveway a little closer to the street, would have had more impact on this tree, which although not depicted on this plan is over here. So just quickly orient the, the board to this plan. You do have Riverside Drive down here, Liberty Street going up here. Uh, Riverside Drive, as you know, is a pretty highly trafficked uh, area. Actually, as you go down here, I just went over there and drove today. It comes around a corner, maybe a little further down, but uh, that then turns upwards and carries on. Uh, and the proposed driveway for this southern house, I think, really is, is one of the major benefits that this shared driveway here operates. Because as you saw on this, oh, I can't quite get to tab over, but on the original plan, the as of right A&R, that driveway would have been located right here, which uh, really does a, a couple things. Uh, one, it would probably necessarily kill this maple tree. Uh, two, it would impact a pretty steep slope coming up from Riverside Drive. But three, and I think maybe most of interest in terms of the site plan review standards as impact vehicular safety, et cetera, uh, it would have a, another curb cut coming right out into this kind of highly trafficked area of Riverside Drive. And especially what I thought when I was there today is any cars coming from this direction around that corner, uh, they come pretty quick to where that driveway would have been located. Uh, so, really I think that removes a pretty, a possible uh, vehicular safety concern here. The other thing it does is keeps all traffic from any of these houses coming in and out of one location while maintaining the exact same sort of uh, necessary proposed parking that there was. Uh, you'll also see that there are a number of proposed new trees on this plan. Any uh, symbol marked here, that's a new tree. So. There's about five, six, seven new trees that are uh, being proposed to go in. This tree and these across the street or on the frontage rather will be maintained. The only trees that exist now that are going to be uh, ultimately have to be removed under this plan are these two maple trees along the Northern boundary line. And the reason for that being that there's really nowhere that this 
house, which again could be built absolutely of right, could be placed that wouldn't result according to an arborist that was consulted in those trees losing a critical amount of root mass. So Mr. Hansel went to the arborist kind of over and over asking if there's any way this could be done that would preserve those trees. There really isn't one. So I believe, and, and John can certainly speak to this himself if I'm wrong, that uh, there will be some trees planted along that boundary as well to replace the lost maples once they are removed. Uh, in summary, I think that while I'm happy to answer any specific questions the board might have, this is a pretty straightforward case that really fits in with the overwhelming goals that the city zoning has currently been moving towards and reducing impervious services in trying to have common access to multiple properties where possible in streamlining the way that, you know, what communal resources can be used uh, between properties that are close to one another. And really, I think this is a uh, reflective of that. It is site plan review, which is not really uh, a discretionary function. You know, if there's any reasonable circumstances under which the board can approve the proposed site plan, you pretty much have to. And I think that this is exactly that. It addresses all these goals. It actually reduces the impact of a plan that otherwise could be done as of right. This is a builder here who's coming and trying to do something that minimizes the impact of what otherwise would be as of right development. You know, this, this hides in some ways driveways that otherwise would have been put right in the open. For instance, here, where there could have otherwise been a driveway, now there'll be some lawn, the existing tree will stay. This is a thoughtful, considerate plan that's being put forward in an effort to have these homes be as integrated and as limited of a disruption to the neighborhood as they can be. And uh, unless the board has specific questions, I'd, I'd close there. And I will stop sharing. Hi, Melissa. Hope all is well. Um, David, you have a question? Uh, I was saying hi to Melissa also. Oh, sorry. sorry. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, so before I, I go to public comment, uh, any any uh, in initial questions from the board to Attorney O'Hara? Uh, I have a, uh, a boring technical question. Um, I hope I can answer it. <laughs> as being the shared driveway provisions in the code, um, Carolyn can correct me if I'm wrong. I, I believe that a 15 foot wide driveway is required. Um, and then with 20 feet for, for the full by access and that should be 25 feet long. Um, I can't really tell because it's not dimensioned on the plan. Um, but from what I can tell, it looks like the driveway is less than 15 feet wide. Um, because the, the easement itself for the driveway is 15 feet and the driveway is it's not as wide as the easement. So I was just wondering if you could confirm the, the driveway dimensions themselves. It's called out as, 50, as 50, seven and a half feet on either side of the property line there. The easement does, but the extents of the pavement yeah less than the easement lines. So that would lead me to believe that the extent of the pavement is less than 15 feet long. Admittedly, I'm zooming in uh, on this plan right now to try to do this calculation without a rule in front of me. I, I don't know that I can do it exactly. Uh, John, if you have any specific answer to this readily, given your familiarity with the plans, you're welcome to chime in here. Well, we went through the plans quite a bit. Smith Associates, out of Saw Metal, along with Carolyn did go over it and she made sure that we had the proper turnaround or the where you could put one car in uh everything there is it should be right up to what it's supposed to be so if you look there's a pull it's, off that it gets wider i'm oh, sorry um oh, there's a pull off within 10 feet um once you get off um i'm looking at the april 7th plan so i don't know if that's different from the plan um uh, Mr. O'Hara that you had up on the screen, um, but there was, there's a widening um, within 10 feet that opens up to 20 feet. Um, and then of course, one, the, you only need one of those for the 
for to meet the standard. Um, so it the width of the driveway would need to meet the 15 foot minimum. But that's what I'm seeing on the plan that was submitted. So it's the width of the driveway easement should be 15 feet, not the width of the driveway itself. No, the width of the driveway itself, but I'm seeing an easement area that's wider than that on the plan I'm looking at. And maybe it's just hard because of the um, hatch marks that's being, that are being used, but I see a dashed line beyond the 15 foot width. But nevertheless, you know, it, it um, you can certainly require that final plans um, clarify that it meet, it's meeting the standards. I mean, it's a just, you know, these are very technical and they either meet it or they don't meet it. So they, the, any applicant, you know, proposing a shared driveway would have to build it according to the zoning. You couldn't, um, I suppose you could grant a waiver, but the only way you could do narrower is if you were um, officially granting something less. Right. We, we can't sort of accidentally grant, uh, you know, because based on the plan being off right or, or right or not right so if you didn't speak to it it doesn't mean that you've waived it they still need to meet that requirement does that answer your question chris or i have a okay go ahead dave i wanted to ask about the trees well, the uh so the Sorry, I, it looked like Chris wasn't going to say anything, and then he was, and so. But are you good, Chris? Can you can you give me a thumbs up, or did you have another oh, follow up? I mean, I've I've created and read a lot of plans in my lifetime, and so I, I'm just not seeing a 15 foot width. There there's there are very few um, requirements for this permit, and that's one of them. So uh, that's my only comment. All right, David. Yeah, just with regard to the tree. So um, the, the the tree, I think the tree, the arborist report, that tree that you call the maple on the southwest corner, I believe it's called the tulip tree and the uh, in the arborist report. I, yeah, for, know, for whatever reason, whatever it is, get the, maple. get the story straight. It's technically, it's, a, it, it's a tulip tree. The surveyor didn't know his no, he's yeah, the it's, 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 a, it's a tulip yeah. park. The park. surveyor doesn't know their trees. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So just yeah, maybe just have that, you know, um, clarified. I want to talk about the, the trees on the so I'm glad to see that you moved that over to a zero lot line to to, to save that. that. That makes a lot of sense. Um the uh, the north side though, can you talk about why you can't shift the house south to at least save one of those two trees on the north property line? Yeah, I could talk better about that. Um, I asked the arborist, he says, no matter what you do, because of the size of the trunk, uh, the root system there, he says, nothing you can do. And um, he said that the tree would have to be trimmed so much that it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't survive anything. So I did try everything in my power to save those two trees. Because the last thing I want is to be cutting down a tree. But again, I guess not to suggest that there's any desire to cut down trees, uh, Mr. Whitehill, but it is, it is a tree that's entirely on this property. And I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not asking about people's, yeah. I, I'm not asking about people's like true heart and their love for trees. I don't care about that, honestly. I just, I think we need a little bit more evidence that like no, a plan yeah, showing so, like, here's the maximum I can shift the house south and and show me why that's not enough to say yeah, so the, one, so the one of them actually the wasn't a huge amount of space that you needed to add actually i'm just the, trying the to find the email right now that I, I i did email my arborist today and i asked him is there any possible way that i can move the house and let me see if i can find it right now yeah um, and and while you're looking for that john the, the point i was looking to make Mr. Whitehill isn't about people's true intentions or anything. It's about what you're actually being asked to do here in approving the shared driveway and what could be done as of right. And even independent of developing houses here, somebody could go cut this tree down as of right. And putting the houses in as of right, this tree would have to go down. The driveway location is not what's driving the, the treatment of this tree. 
it's just the point I was going to make. And I, John, I believe will supplement with that, with that email. All right. Well, I, sure. I, I would add, if I can just briefly though, I mean, we, we understand that. I mean, we, we understand that, that there are things that can be done of right. This hearing is also an opportunity where we, you know, hear from the community and hear from abutters. And if we can, it, it is it is one of the few opportunities to at least discuss some of the concerns, whether or not we are at a place where a property owner can do yeah. something just by right. So we we understand that. I you know just if you and I and we are well aware of the history of all this. Um, so yeah, it's just I, to I say that say, the the requested relief isn't isn't what's causing it. That's all I I meant to say. And after you said okay. the history of everything that's going on. Trust me, I did everything in my power. I asked the arborist today if there was anything possible. And he says, John, I don't think so. It's possible with the foundation, just not enough room. And if anything, I would have liked to save those trees because of all the noise I've been getting lately. I just don't need it. And I would have done just about anything to be able to save those. So... Uh, like I said, I, I, I went through every hoop possible. And he said, there's no way. So. Uh, any uh, other questions before I open it up to uh, public comment? Anything for the board for the applicants? Or the, the applicant and, and his uh, representative? Um, okay, so hearing uh, nothing, um, I will open it up to uh, public comment. If you could, if you would wish to speak, either hit your hand icon or um, turn your camera on. Uh, you'll, if you turn your camera on, you'll shift to the front of my page, and I won't have to look so hard um, for you. Um, you can, so you can do the hand icon or turn your camera on and, and give me a wave. So with that, do I see anybody? I I'm not seeing any hand. Oh, there we go. Okay. I saw Jenna and then you disappeared. Jenna uh, uh, Lanterman. So if you can say your name and your address for the record, please. Oh, but you're muted. So you need to mute, unmute. You're right, I got one of the two. You can see my face, you can't hear my voice. Um, I'm Jenna Lanterman. I live at 283 Riverside Drive, so just across Liberty Street from this proposed shared driveway. And a couple of pieces of just local resident context I wanted to add. Um, I appreciate uh, Ryan O'Hara's uh, mention of the traffic that is Riverside Drive, and that does extend to Liberty Street. So I appreciate not wanting to put a driveway on Riverside, but people do turn onto Liberty Street and tear up it <laughs> round the corner and hit the gas. Um, we've, you know, we have kids who play outside. It gets a little dicey sometimes. Um, and for whatever reason, the driveway that was, I think of it as Irene's, the driveway directly across from us, is also a turnaround. So daily, um, we work from home now, we look out the window all the time, cars turn onto Liberty Street, turn around in that driveway to head back onto Riverside, perhaps because of the cutlery building and businesses, you know, people trying to find businesses located within it. Um, so I am nervous about adding two houses worth of cars to that spot. And I just wanted to offer um, that context and I would encourage, I mean, I know it's too late, but if you hadn't come and looked at the property, the, the canopy of trees is beautiful. I appreciate the attempt to save them. I wonder if a smaller house size might be a possibility um, for protecting the trees uh, a bit better. Thanks. All right, thank you. Uh, and See any other hands? Camera waving. Oh, uh, Elizabeth uh, Porto. You can turn your camera camera on if you can, and uh, unmute yourself. Um, I'd prefer not to turn my camera on. Is that acceptable? 
Sure, sure. You can just uh, say your name and your address for the for the record, please. Um, my name is Elizabeth Porto, and I do live in the Bay State neighborhood. I'd prefer not to say where I live. Is that acceptable? Otherwise, I won't make a comment. For privacy reasons, um, I prefer not to say where I live. Uh, Carolyn, uh, do you know of any issue of why somebody must uh, say their whole address? Um, I think, um, you know, certainly that's never been uh, requested before, um, but I think the board can honor the request if someone's concerned about that. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, if, if she wants, if you want to accept that as just the Bay State resident, um, you know, it's your problem. I actually have a problem with it. I mean, you're not you're not identifying yourself by face. You're not identifying yourself by address. It's just some name. It's not. This is a public record, and I don't think it it has a place. Okay, all right. Uh, then I won't comment. Um, I have okay. taught in the prison system, and I, I really don't want to make my address public. Oh, I appreciate because that. Because I, I am a public. I mean, I I, I really don't want certain certain student, former students to find me, so. Okay, I appreciate that. That's that, that's certainly your prerogative. Um, and, uh, but I, I, I agree that we need to, to keep it a public record and, and, and know who, uh, who, who, is, who is here. Um, uh, Brian, sub, uh, I'm gonna say it wrong, Subak, so, I'm, uh, yes, you, Brian. Subak, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, hi, my name is Brian Subak. I live at 7 Lexington Ave, which is the opposite corner of the block that this uh, that's in question. I also own, own 10 Wood Avenue, which is the only house on the cut through street between Lexington Ave and Liberty Street. Um, so let me start by saying that the, uh, the infiltration of, of new homes and the added traffic and cars that is, that's happening within our neighborhood um, has caused problems for me personally around my street. They, um, this developer built a house on, on Lexington and four cars went with that house. There's four cars to that house. So there's not enough room up in front of that house. So they park around my house now. And it's a very quiet neighborhood where you know kids learn to ride bikes and there's pets and things. And it's creating quite a hazard almost on a daily basis. So with the, with, first of all, with the addition of two more houses could be the addition of eight more cars to the neighborhood. But the point, I guess the point is the, uh, the driveway, the curb cut or whatever it is. is um, so potentially there could be eight cars coming in and out of that driveway that never were coming in and out of that driveway. And if, it, if anybody drives up Liberty Street at any time during the day, that's really the hub of the neighborhood where all the kids hang out and play baseball or soccer or wiffle ball and uh, adding that many cars to that neighborhood isn't a good idea, in my opinion. Also, I'd, I, would, I would question, is there, was there only one arborist that was um, brought in on the question about the trees? And we're just gonna go with that one arborist suggestion. Is there, you know, could there possibly be more people could talk about those trees? Maybe we could save those trees. May I answer um, I, I would, um, just in, in the interest of, you know, uh, uh, it's not the uh, that we we don't require applicants to well uh, we don't require applicants to have like second opinions and third opinions and 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 things like that so I I don't I would just I would just leave it at that that that's not required by any uh, thing that uh, I understand about the application process. Even if, but could it be requested? Oh, uh, we can we could talk about it as a condition. Um, so we'll we'll note that, but um, it, it, we in order to put a burden like that on a property owner, um, we would have to be very circumspect about whether or not it's within our discretion. Uh, so, and I tend to think we'd be pretty hard pressed to do that, but we we will we'll give it some thought. Uh, did or, uh, was that uh, was that everything? Was that uh, did you have any further? Yeah, I guess comments? I guess there, well, there's no real way to stop this. I guess right. I mean. This is the wrong hearing for me to be talking at. 
I I would say this is the hearing where this question of the shared driveway is addressed. So to the right. extent you're so I think that the number of cars coming in out of that in and out of that driveway, I think would pose a problem. Yes. Okay. Um, all right. I see uh, Andrea uh, Donay. Um, so if we can hear from you, uh, you can unmute yourself. Yes. Hello, everyone. My name is Andrea Dona. Um, I want to thank the committee. Oh, I live on 32 Liberty Street. I have some background noise right now. Sorry about that. Um, so I'm living on uh, one moment. Thank you. <laughs> okay, you it's all okay. heard we, our, we, we understand. <laughs> you, you heard our bedtime travel. Okay. Um, so I'm living currently on 32 Liberty Street. That's the corner lot um, with Wood A. So I live close to Brian and I also live close to Jenna and the lot we are talking. I used to live on 20, on 294 Riverside Drive, just across um, that brick house. So I know therefore a lot about the water table and the water problems we have. And my concern is due to not only the development um, on 291, but also to the development on Lexington that Brian referred to, and even further down like to um, Warner Street, there's a lot of new big development and thus sealing of surfaces happening. And with that big driveway plus the big new houses, I'm very concerned about the water dis displacement. Um, I think we will occur a lot of new drainage trouble that's not only affecting the neighbors, but also the city as they have to repair more sidewalks and more streets. We just noticed that a new sinkhole is opening on Wood F. We had a sinkhole open last year and the DPW had to come and fix it in some way, but now it's opening up just a few inches away from where they repaired it. I haven't reported it yet. Um, so I'm concerned about what, what a big development in general does on that lot. I'm also concerned about all those cars mentioned. Typically there are families moving in that kind of houses, so they have for sure two big cars. And I don't see them all fit on that lot. And I'm concerned uh, with everyone else about safety on our street for pedestrians and especially the kids. There also used to be um, a school bus stop right there at the corner. Um, and the last point I'm concerned about are the trees. And um, I also wonder um, every owner has the right to do what they want with their lot. But I wonder um, there's a solution how the trees could be safe. And that is really adapting the plan and not building as proposed. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it very much. All right. Very good. Thank you very much. Um, before I uh, recognize, uh, I realized I not being not the pro that our usual uh, chair is, I, I forgot to mention that if you could uh, uh, be, uh, be mindful of not repeating um, same, the same points raised by other people um, that have already been raised and uh, keeping common as, as best as you can limited to the question that is before us, which is approval of this uh, shared uh, driveway. Um, I meant to, uh, I meant to at the beginning to in, impose a, a two minute uh, time limit at the beginning of this, given that I haven't, uh, I'm, I'm not going to start now, but I will ask that people uh, be mindful of the time. We, I will keep an eye on the clock, and and if uh, uh, I I will do I will do my best to not uh, cut people off. But if if points are being raised that that have been been addressed and heard and uh, are repetitive, um, I I will go ahead and step in for for time. We are, after all, a volunteer a volunteer board. <laughs> um, so uh, with that, uh, I can see if I can see any other hands. Uh, I think I saw a flash of uh, uh, Ian Gaida. That is correct. Um, my name is Ian Gaida. I live at 337 Riverside. Um, I will keep my comments brief, uh, but I echo the concerns of my neighbors. Um, that that street is is full of children all day long. Um, it is, you know, the neighborhood has already 
surrounded by by a lot of traffic and and adding up to eight more cars on the shared driveway, um, it, it, it will be a burden to the neighborhood. Um, similarly, I'm very concerned about the drainage and the trees. Um, if anything can be done to save these uh, very, very old maple trees, uh, well over 200 years old, which really make the neighborhood what it is and, and uh, deliver a lot of sustainability goals with, with cooling of houses, with uh, absorption of water uh, and so forth, um, you know, that would be uh, of peak importance to me. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, anybody? Uh, uh, Emma L, if you could give us your, oh, you know what, actually, can you hold that for just a minute? Um, Ian, did you say your, uh, your, your full name and address? I, I didn't hear. Yep. Sorry. Uh, 337 Riverside Drive. Um, okay. Yeah, Thank you. So we'll, just, we'll have it for the record. Thank you. Of course. All right. Now, Emma, if uh, I could get your uh, name and address for the record and your comment. Are you ready for me? Yes, please. So you're just naming an address uh, for the record. Okay. I'm Emma Linderman. I live at 277 Riverside Drive. And I have a question um, due to the high water table. Um, and uh, I, I guess my question is whether the driveway has to be asphalt or whether it can be um, something that allows uh, for, I, I'm, I don't remember the right terms, but, but I'm just concerned. I, I'm wondering whether that driveway can be gravel or something that would allow um, for, to eliminate water runoff. All right. Um, thank you. I was listening to all of that. I had to put the dog out as I listened, multitasking. Um, I think uh, uh, perhaps just so I can clarify, uh, were you asking about like a, a permeable, um, a, per a permeable material? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, that's a that's a good that's a good question. Um, and uh, and and perhaps and we will circle back uh, after public comment uh, to ask about that. Um, uh, other comment? Anybody see any hands raised that I'm missing? All right, so I, I am not seeing other, uh, other comments. Uh, so before we, uh, so we'll come back now. Um, I come, I'm going to come back to the, uh, well, so first I'll come back to Carolyn uh, and ask what, <laughs> and ask what, uh, if you have any additional comments at this uh, moment. Um, no, there were, so um, I'm just going to pull up. Um, um you know there were some comments about drainage from dpw um um about um you know that issue about additional runoff coming from the expanded driveway Just keep in mind the driveway's in the same location as the existing driveway it's slightly um longer than the driveway plus the garage i think by about 20 feet mm -hmm. so there's um that adds to um, a bit to the impervious surface, but obviously consolidated driveways three to one and just expanding the existing one will um, um, not have, um, you know, it's not a tremendous change from the footprint of the driveway standpoint. Obviously the roofs are a different question, but the, what's before you is the driveway. Um, in terms of the materials used, uh, there, it, an applicant can certainly create a, a trap rock gravel driveway or some other surface, but that's not necessarily considered more permeable um, because the infiltration rates uh, for compacted gravel are very close to uh, what an asphalt driveway would be or a cement concrete driveway would be. Um, there are ways to, um, you know, address drainage. Um, the applicant could 
for example, direct roof runoff into dry wells from the homes to make sure that that sort of captures additional runoff that might um, um, otherwise drain onto the driveway and then into the street um, for the northerly structure. Um, but um, otherwise, and when comparing it to individual driveways, um, you know, a shared driveway has much smaller footprint. Um, uh, so one last call for, for public comment and, and I'm going to circle back to the board to make sure they don't have, okay. Uh, Mr. Niete. Uh, I, I don't, there, there you yeah, go. No worries. I've lived my whole life with people not pronouncing my name correctly. So it's no problem. <laughs> I, I am sorry though. Satish Natetta. Uh, I live at 14 Liberty street and we uh, abut the new project. Um, and so thank you to the board um, for uh, having this meeting. Thank you to Mr. Hensel for providing um, all of the information about the plans for the new development. And we echo the comments of a number of our neighbors regarding the potential impact that this new development will have on the traffic in our neighborhood, our concerns about uh, safety, not only for kids, but for, for all the folks that live in this neighborhood, um, concerns about the water table as well. Um, one of the things that we as abutters are very concerned about are the health and the safety of the trees. And I commend Mr. Hansel for hiring an arborist to attempt to maintain, as people have said, the beautiful canopy of trees that are that are along our uh, the border of our two homes. Um, in the tree report, they really focused their attention on the sugar maples that are uh, right at the beginning of our driveway and of um, would border with the new home. But there are other, there are two other very large, um, I don't know if they're sugar maples, but I think they're maple trees uh, along the same border that is that are on Mr. Hensel's property. Um, and there was not really much discussion in the tree report regarding those two properties. And I assume that's because the foundation for the new home will not touch the roots for those properties, but looking at the plan, excuse me, the trees, um, for the will not touch the new property, but looking at the plan that was introduced today, it seemed as if there was a garage right near where those two trees are going to be. So would the placement of the garage disrupt those two trees? Because those two trees are, although they're on Mr. Hansel's property, a very large portion of them hang over our property. So that's one of the, the concerns that we have. Again, we wanna just reiterate, it'd be, I think the preference of everyone in this neighborhood to maintain those trees, but it sounds as if given the plans that Mr. Hanzel has, has um, intended that it doesn't seem that those trees could be saved. But if a second opinion can be garnered, I, I would be supportive of that to see exactly if there's anything that can be done to save those trees and to achieve the goals that Mr. Hensel would like. All right, very good, thank you. Um, all right, I'm gonna make uh, a, a speak now forever hold, you know, show me a hand now, um, or forever hold your peace. Um, and the last call to the board, uh, if you have any questions before we, um, to the applicants, just before we close. Okay, so yeah, I, hearing- I was wondering if Mr. Hansel uh, could address that question about the two trees. Um, I have the tree report, if you want me to share my screen just so we can look at them. Uh, yeah. Mr. Tate, are you talking about the two trees that uh, Mr. Nteta just talked about uh, near the garage? Just to be clear on what we're talking about. That's what I want clarification on what trees we're talking about. If Chris has the if Chris has it up and can we share let Chris share a screen so those the trees back back here. No, those will not be touched. Trust, trust me, Mr. Tate, if I could do anything to say the two on the right-hand side going in, I would do it. So the one, the ones in the foreground are, are going to be affected by the foundation, but... Um, Correct. It is, the no, there's no way around it. Yeah. Right. 
from your plan, it looks like the garage is far enough away from those two in the rear that, that they'll be okay. Yeah, so I work with Dave Hawkins, who was recommended to me by the tree arborist in Northampton. And he gave me two names or three names. He has to give three names. He gave me three names. And um, so that's the person I work with. So it's, yeah, I can hire another tree arborist that Mr. Parcelletti recommends, but it's going to get the same results. Uh, I, so the thing is, I trust me, if I could do anything not to cut those trees down, but the only way he says, if you dig a foundation, they're going to be gone. And the canopy is yeah, big. So you know, they have to trim the canopy back and it, the trees, the first two won't make it. So like all I can say is I did everything in my power to save any and every tree there. From past experience, I know one thing, I'd rather go save them if possible. And I did go that route and those are the only two that are gonna be, have to go. Okay. Verification. Uh, David, oh, go ahead, sorry. Um, David, this is the same, maybe same you? question, so. Okay. Um, all right. Um, so if none of the planning board members have any further questions and I don't see any further hands, um, can I have a motion to close public hearing? Anybody? I move to close public comment. Okay, thank you. Uh, and anybody second? You guys are killing me, man. Second. <laughs> thank you. Sorry, my audio uh, doesn't seem to work all the time. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. Um, okay, so uh, on the motion to close public comment, uh, Chris. Yes. Uh, David. Yes. Uh, Melissa. I abstain from any voting on this one since I wasn't here at the beginning of the presentation. No. Uh, oh, uh, is an abstention going to mess with our quorum? OK, all right. Uh, OK, uh, abstention noted. Uh, Sam. Yes. OK, and I also vote to close public uh, comment. Um, okay, so any discussion with uh, the board? It, se it seems like uh, he, you know, um, he's putting in one, one curb cut, one shared driveway. Uh, it's not my thing, but uh, I also am not buying the house. So, you know, great. Let them, buy, let them build the shared driveway. Um, I will say that I did, I have gone and, and looked at the property and, uh, and the parcels. And I think one shared driveway is a lot overall, less asphalt um, or concrete or whatever material that gets used than, than would be to have three. Um, I totally agree and understand where the neighbors are coming from. Those trees are gorgeous. Um, they also, just in the way that we are uh, experiencing this all over the city, are approaching the end of their, um, you know, perhaps perhaps approaching the end of their lifespan anyway, but I'm not an arborist uh, I, I, at, any, at any rate. So, I mean, they certainly look healthy now, um, but um, but they will, there'll be a loss to the neighborhood to be sure. Um, I don't know that requiring a second opinion, um, from an arborist will change the inevitable. Um, but, uh, it is, I suppose we could, you know, ask for, uh, you know, further, further input. I'm, I'm a little hesitant to ask that of the, it is something that we could perhaps ask for. I, I don't know that I'm, I, I concur that that's a condition that we should put on at, at this point. Um, uh, so over, overall, I, I, and, I, and as far as the traffic goes, if, if the houses are gonna be there anyway and the cars are gonna be there anyway, um, I, I actually think a, set, a one shared driveway is much safer and especially not on Riverside Drive is much safer than, than to have three or four where there, where there could just be one. Um, uh, that's seems, that seems apparent to me, but that's that based on looking at the site. Um, anybody else? Yes, Carolyn. Oh, no. 
Yep, Chris. Yeah, Marissa, I agree with you completely. Um, the houses can be built by right. So it's the cars are gonna that come with the houses are gonna be there no matter what. And and it's my feeling that the shared driveway is a safer condition um, overall, given that the cars will be there one way or another. Um, so I don't I don't have any problem with the shared driveway. I I do think that it should meet the requirements of uh, the zoning provisions. Um, which to my eye, it's a little too narrow, but um, we can address that with a comment. Uh, any, any other uh, comments? Uh, so go, go ahead, Carolyn. Um, I was just gonna say that um, certainly to confirm, you know, prior to final, um, sign off of the plans or issuance of a um, CO for the um, first house, you know, they, they, we can make sure that a survey plan shows the extent of the driveway meeting the zoning standards, or you can just say, um, you know, that they have to show proof that they're meeting the requirements in the zoning. Um, they're going to have to come back and show um, proof of recording of easements for the maintenance of the driveway at any rate. So that's going to have to be a recorded, um, you know, a reference to a recorded plan. So that's going to have to show the um, driveway dimensions. Um, so I, I think there's definitely uh, places that can be um, where that can be checked. Um. I'd like to um, yes, David. With regard to the I'm, I'm with regard to the house on the south west side. Um, I don't know how how exactly this would work, but I, I'd like the arborist to give specific guidelines on how the air spading, like the dimension, like the radius around the the, the trunk, et cetera, for air spading to make sure that that uh, tulip poplar. Uh, remains healthy, even with the shifted house. Um, so if there's any way that the arborist, I don't think you need to go find another arborist, but if you can, is there a way that an updated arborist report given the new location of the house could be submitted to, the, to Carolyn and just before the, the permit is issued? Can we make that? I don't know how you say that in, the, in less what? words than I just did. Well, sure. I mean, typically in other permits, you've issued conditions where the arborist has to oversee tree protection measures as are initially recommended in the arborist report. So you can require that before um, construction on that site begins that um, there's a report from the arborist indicating that in this case, it's Dave Hawkins. So he has overseen um, the protective um, measures that will uh, are identified in his report and show that those have been done. Fine. I just, I'd like a revised report to be in the record. That's all I mean. You mean is showing the um, shifted house location? Yeah, just the arborist's take on the dimension of air spading and et cetera for the tulip poplar with the shifted house, exactly. Okay. Can we also add in those two other trees at the rear of the property? because those weren't mentioned at all in the tree report. They were just kind of shown in the background. I don't know the foundation yeah. of the- if There's no protection needed oh. though. They're, they're far enough away. I have no idea. They're not shown on the plan. Um, so yes, you can also um, require as part of that condition that tree protection for those trees on the far Western um, property line um, are installed. Because even if they are, I mean, during, con you know, construction can be messy. And if it's not specifically identified on, a pl on site, um, contractors may decide to store stuff that over there that's, you know, because it's an easy out of the way place. So that would certainly help um, ensure that that area is sort of just walled off. They're charging all the foundation fill on the root system of those trees isn't going to do them any favors. Okay, um, so why, the note that I made of that is that uh, is a condition of 
having the ar an arborist oversee the tree protection for the poplar tulip and the two trees on the uh, the back. Uh, there's probably a more specific way to say that, and to demonstrate uh, compliance um, and have a, a with with a with a plan uh, on file with the application. Is that does that sound right, Carolyn? Um, so compliance with the, uh, with the standards or you, with the tree, are you with talking about just tree protection? Tree protection yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I think, um, just consistent, um, so, uh, consistent with the arborist report with the, um, adjusted location of the house foundation. We could specify those trees as the rear property line of lot three. I wish I wish I knew my trees better and I could tell you the, you know, the type. Okay. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, ho hope Carolyn gives a, I'm gonna give this a, a try um, in terms of the conditions, but I, I can trust Carolyn and will help us clean it up. Um, any further suggestions or thoughts from the board or questions? Um, so what I what I have so in the um, in the staff report, uh, the proposed conditions in the staff report are prior to any site work the applicant shall install. Well, so this is kind of incorporated into what we just said. Tree protection is noted by the applicant's arborist and shall submit a report by the arborist indicating these measures have been installed. I guess that would be am amended to make sure that 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 plan showed the um, uh, the change location of the house or, or properly the properly indicate the location of the house um, and. Prior to selling the first lot, the applicant shall show proof of uh, recording of easements for the maintenance of the driveway at the register of deeds. Prior to the issuance of the uh, CO on the first lot, the applicant shall show compliance with the tree replacement requirements for the trees over 20 inches uh, that have been removed. Um, it's been proposed uh, that we also make a condition of showing proof of like zoning compliance on the driveway. I, I personally think that is you know, uh, I, as, as not to talk like a lawyer, but I have a, I kind of have a, a thing about not, um, asking permission or, or, uh, requiring a demonstration of something that is already required by rule or regulation. Um, and I think that is redundant of the regulations. I, I guess a question that I would have for Carolyn is if the, you know, if we get to the end of this and they've poured, they've poured the, the, the driveway and it is a few feet short of, of how wide it's supposed to be. Like, what's the remedy then? Do we make them go back and do it? Like, what's the... Yeah, they have to comply. So they would have to, the building commissioner would issue, would issue a violation of, uh, based on the zoning and they'd have to correct it. Okay. I mean, I am satisfied, I mean, to Chris's point, which I, I, I'm not, uh, I don't do plans all the time. And so I'm not uh, doubting uh, that aspect of it, of what of what you see, Chris, I do think, though, that the the rule is clear. The you know the the requirements are clear, and the measure the the we are not the 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 sort of the zone code enforcement um, aspect. I mean, not the we are we are not the ones who will be enforcing the the building requirements um, enforcement. Um, so I think that is redundant of another uh, entity's authority and and job but but i mean if people want to make it a condition we can could we make a um, condition of a, a revised plan at, at some point that just shows dimensions of the driveway because i think if they dimension the driveway it would come yeah, i mean 13 or 14 feet you, you could try you could you could submit, um, you could require a pre-submittal um, final plan showing the relocation of the house and the dimension driveway meeting the zoning. I'm okay with seeing it with the recorded um, easement plan, but I, I just, I feel like the plans that we see need to have more information on them. I mean, if we're not seeing where the trees are, we're not seeing the dimension, there's, 
there's very few requirements for for this uh, special permit, and so it's just hard not to have those those dimensions on the plan. Yeah, you know, he they have to submit a new set of plans anyway with the revised house location, so they can just make it very clear on those. Okay. Um, so then I guess I would put the con the condition being uh, uh, just dimension of, of driveway width, you know, driveway dimension. Well, I think the, or the, the 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 is is to file a revised plan that shows, you know, you know, all of the with with the uh, you know di the different location of the house, and we can say to do it with the easement. Uh, with the, you know, with the easement plan. Does that sound right, Ms. Carolyn? Um, yeah, so we could, hold on, sorry, I'm just scrolling down here, just a minute. Um, you know, you could attach it to um, the, prior to the first lot sale, the applicant shall show proof of recording of the easements uh, for the maintenance of the driveway, the register of deeds, uh, and a, plan set shall be attached to the easement um, um, document showing the dimension driveway that is compliant with zoning. Thank you. I'm not a complicated guy. No, it's it's fine. It's, I'm, I'm not. Um, uh, I there's certainly nothing uh, wrong with that. And, you know, it's helpful. Frankly, it's probably more helpful to those of us who are not the plan designers and people to, to have a little clearer plans and more accurate plans to begin with. Um, uh, uh, so, um, okay. Um, so do I have, uh, if there are no other comments, if I can have a motion to, uh, if I can have a motion to, uh, uh, approve with the conditions that we laid out, which I, uh, we can, I, we probably don't want me to read it out. I don't know if we want uh, Carolyn to read it out, but if, uh, but if I can have the motion, we can, um, for the record, sort out exactly what those conditions are. I'd like to make a motion to approve the permit for a shared driveway with conditions uh, to be outlined by Carolyn right now. <laughs> Uh, do you want to get a second for that before I do it? Uh, well, how will they know what they're seconding? Uh, but yes, that's fine. So, <laughs> to discuss. <laughs> second. Okay. All right. Um, so then as part of the discussion, <laughs> what I have is prior to any site work, the applicant shall install tree protection as noted by the applicant's arborist and shall submit a report by the arborist indicating the measures have been installed. The report shall... Um, um, identify the protection measures for the tulip poplar and the two trees along the western property line with adjusted location for uh, the house. Prior to selling the first lot, the applicant shall show proof of recording of easements for the maintenance of the driveway at the registry of deeds. Uh, easements shall be recorded with a plan showing location of the lots and dimension driveway. Prior to issuance of a certificate of occupancy on the first lot, the applicant shall show compliance with tree replacement requirements for the all for the two trees over 20 inches DBH that have been removed. Um, all right, so we've had that moved and seconded and the conditions absolutely clarified for the record. So with that, I will uh, take the vote. Uh, so Chris, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, David. Yes. Uh, Melissa is abstaining. Uh, Sam. Yes. Uh, and I also vote yes. All right. Um, all right. That was a good discussion. Um, so I think that is everything, except for that we need to very quickly uh, approve the minutes. We have minutes from March 11th. Now we're March going 25th. back to the, we're going back to the other permits. Oh God, right. Shoot. I mean, 
delighted. Uh, um, and thank you for your patience and hanging in there. I uh, apologize. Okay, so we are going back to the 7.50 uh, p.m. Uh, agenda item, which is a special, special permit amendment by Eric Broadbent and Susan McRae, a uh, lot configuration modifications and exemption from tree replacement for solar access at 254 Old Wilson Road in Florence. So thanks for hanging in there. I'm sorry, I'm sorry I got ahead of myself a little bit. Well, I appreciate um, your hanging in there and for the effort to get a quorum and, and for whatever hoops had to be jumped through to assemble. Um, these are extenuating circumstances. So Susie and I are here and uh, we have our representative with Berkshire Design Group who has developed the site plan. And um, I should have mentioned Susie McRae, Eric Brabant, 95 Barrett Street, mm -hmm. but the future of 264 Old Wilson Road. Um, a beautiful piece of property. We're very fortunate and we look forward to working with the city to enhance that entire landscape. So thank you. And I'll turn it over to Jeff, who will address the site plan. Great. And we appreciate your consideration. Super. Thanks, Eric and Susie and, um, and planning board. Um, and somebody, somebody mentioned just as a side note that, um, you know, this felt like getting back to the old days. And I, this, this does sort of rekindle those, the old days of sitting in the back of the at the council chambers until midnight because the hearing before you was long. So this is, uh, I appreciate everybody hanging in there. <laughs> um, if I can share my screen, I will just real quickly sort of walk you through what the proposal is um, and, and what we've got. So um, this is at the former Pine Grove golf course. Hopefully everybody can see this site plan. Um, and uh, last year, part of the proposal was when the, when the golf course was closed was to um, donate roughly 100 acres to the city um, uh, for conservation purposes. And as a result of that, carve out um, roughly 12, 13 acres for um, five single family lots um, that the prior owner had, had subdivided and sold as part of his deal. So. Um, Eric and Susie purchased those, the, those parcels, that 12, 13 acres, um, with the lots that had been created at that time for that permit. Um, there was one, one previous amendment to this permit, um, and I apologize, this does get confusing because this was done by a special permit that created these lots um, without frontage. Um, but we did come in with one prior amendment for an actual house plan, their house uh, on what is lot two. Um, at the time that this was permit, this plan was permitted, these were all sort of fictitious, um, you know, uh, 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 house uh, footprints because we really, really didn't have a buyer or any, any notion of, um, you know, what those may be in actuality. So um, the previous amendment revised um, what was happening on lot two. And so the amendment that's before you tonight is really dealing with um, these internal lot lines as well as the locations of some of these other homes um, and particularly with what was um, previously the, the prior owner's home. Um, originally they thought that may might um, you know rehab it but it's, it really wasn't worth um, you know, much, much in terms of, of resale and, and restoration value. So um, trying to reconfigure the lots a little bit to make these a little bit more, um, more valuable and, and um, you know, nicer locations. So what you see here is the same um, outline of, of the uh, parcels to be developed, the remainder, you know, this doesn't affect the city conservation land at all. Uh, lot two is exactly where it was. Um, the one difference that you'll see relative to property lines is previously the, the lot two, lot three division was, was you know, upwards in, in this location. We've moved it further south, keeping lots three and four more in similar size. And really this has to do with keeping all of the, the, the uh, easements and agreements with the cell tower, um, the fall zone, all of that on lot two, what will be Eric and Susie's parcel, so it doesn't encumber 
or become a question at all um, for, for any of the future lots. Um, the other thing this does, again, like I mentioned, up, up um, along Old Gilson Road where, where the former house was, um, because that house is now gone, it creates an opportunity to really build houses on the northerly property line, which is which looks out over the old fairways and is really, you know, where the most desirable locations are. Um, and so really this just flips the flag lot from, you know, what was the flagpole was on this northerly line um, in, in this location. And so hopefully, um, you know, uh, now the the flag lot has been flipped so that the you know allows the those two houses to be located in that location um and then lastly what this does is the driveway to lots three and four had formerly cut across sort of the middle of the lots um we're proposing to bring them bring them down to the lower elevation where um again just it's it's flatter it's it's a more conducive area on the site we have uh, valid perks for both those lots and there's much nicer views um, and much less disruptive to sort of this middle hillside that's that's pretty heavily wooded so um, there was um, as part of this um, request or this amendment we are requesting a waiver for a number of trees that are being removed for solar purposes so hopefully everybody can see this plan um, what this shows is what you know these trees here at lot two were part of the prior amendment um, and approval what we're asking for um, in this amendment tonight is removal of these trees in here as well as these couple of trees in this location anything you see highlighted in orange or, or red are ones that were uh, requesting a waiver uh, a replacement waiver for Due to solar purposes and what you know what these x's show are really the the solar availability for those homes um, throughout the year so anything that falls you know to the west south and east of you know these these yellow uh x's are are you know areas that would affect the solar gain for those for those homes um we did provide an updated table and the trees obviously that are removed for construction purposes. We really don't have the ability to plant those anywhere on site due to the fairly heavily wooded nature of the site. So those, um, they're, they're offering up a payment in lieu of um, replacing those. Um, I think we did receive comments from the DPW. I don't imagine any of those are um, anything that concern that are they're um, of too concerning to us they were some are conditions remaining from the prior permit others um, are just clarifications that I don't um, I don't see any issue with so um, I think with that I'll try to keep that brief and open it up to any questions Anyone on the uh, planning board have any questions? I have, I have a couple, Jeff. Um, is there is there an easement for the driveway to the new flag lot that's you know, it's cutting through the other lot? Yeah, so there's 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 going to be a homeowners agreement that you know deals with all the easements. All of those, a lot of those are already in place. Um, and there are certainly other documents that um, you know are going to affect um, or impact all you know all five lots. So most of those documents, and, and Eric and Susie may be able to speak better to it, but I think a lot of those are at least in draft format, if not final format. So it will deal with all those cross easements, utilities, um, access, maintenance, all of those things. And uh, generally, I don't know if I'm allowed to ask this, but it might. It might lead to my next question. Um, so are all of these houses kind of in some sort of agreement to be purchased at this point? Like, are these the final locations and sizes and everything? We hope so. I, I think the, these are certainly a lot further along than was what was shown in the, in the original permit. You know, the, there is an actual buyer now, there are actual, um, you know, um, buyers for some of these lots that are that are looking at them um, with with house footprints that are being considered. So I think this is certainly a lot more developed than it was originally. 
I can't say that, you know, some of these won't change, but I think, you know, we've certainly gone through this process enough to, to feel pretty good about these locations. And um, again, I've, I've been a little bit conservative with some of these footprints in the event that, that some of them get a little bit smaller actually. So I'll just add, um, we have engaged uh, Wright Builders as the site development uh, contractor and they um, have emphasized uh, net zero and that in, hence wise has um, determined the scope of clearing in, on the further away lots um, and they have clients that they've spoken with and we don't have anything under agreement, but we believe this, these are the viable sites for homes with the minimal impact. Um, and that, that is under their advisement and also Jeff and Berkshire Design. So it's, it's a lot more reasonable and we're, you know, we're trying to move the site development work forward, which is why it, thank you for having a quorum because it's, a, it's timing is important. Um, so thank you. And Eric, you're kind of, you're you're um, getting to the point, which is uh, my my recollection from the last hearing is that um, these waivers for the for the tree replacement requirements are somewhat predicated on the solar access for net zero homes, as well as the open space. Is that correct, Carolyn? That's right. So the board can consider a waiver from um, full tree replacement. Um, for the purposes of providing open space and uh, net zero energy homes. There's some other elements, but they have to be at least those um, two components um, or um, you know, affordable housing is another mechanism or um, avenue that could be provided to, to meet that standard. So you need to see that that's important as part of the plan that's submitted to the board is to see that's what their goal is they're, and they're only seeking the waiver for those trees that are necessary to meet that solar gain and not for any of the trees that are ancillary and just they want for views or for other clearing, which is why um, Jeff described the trees that are just being taken down for construction and not being sought for a waiver from replacement. It's also tied to being net zero homes, which I guess yeah. we don't know that that's what they're going to be yet because we don't have buyers or, or finalized. Well, I will say that the homeowners association agreement, which has been um, approved by us and submitted, um, and it's in front of our attorneys and right builders has helped us construct that do require net zero. So and with them as the builder, that's their aim and desire. So we expect that they will be. I guess the other piece is, so the, you can grant the permit. Um, I mean, it's sort of a chicken and egg. They're saying they're gonna do this. They're showing the plans about how they do this, but obviously you wanna see it on the back end that they've done it. And what happens is it's really sort of, at, uh, you did this in the conditions for the original um, waiver um, that, it, at, at the time of CO is when the um, tree replacement um, uh, is um, sort of all tabulated and finalized. So that's the point at which they show, here's where how we met net zero, therefore we've met the conditions of the planning board. And if they haven't, then, then um, the result would be they just pay into the tree fund for those um, additional trees. So it's all sort of checked out and balanced um, upon certificate of occupancy. Thank you. Okay. I wanna, I'm having trouble like drilling down on this. I mean, I think it's, I mean, it's very clear on the plan with the purple and the, uh, let's say mauve trees, uh, like which ones you're requesting the waiver for, but I'm unclear like the logic of why these were requested a waiver. And it looks like in the background, there's like a bunch more trees that you're not taking down, which is fine. So I'm having trouble understanding why like these pink trees are required. For, I guess, 
I'm not saying you're doing something wrong. I just, it's, it's not clear that the, anal the analysis is not clear from the documentation that we have, I guess. And I know so, it's just really money in the fund, I guess. So, but I just yeah. wonder if we're setting up a system that can be checked at some point. So David, just to your, you know, your question that the process that we went through to identify, you know, both the trees for re removal in general, but then also those for the solar waiver were really sort of designing and laying out the homes and getting all that grading right to then understand what the limits of work were or the limits of grading were. And then so within those limits, we could then identify and go out and survey any of those trees that would fall under the ordinance. So, you know, in this case, we identified all of those trees and some of those trees that you see underneath that aren't being removed or ones that were right on the fringe or just outside the edge of the limit of work or limit of grading that we would leave. So any of the ones that we're highlighting on this plan, on the, on the, that plan, I can actually bring it up um, on, on this. So any of these are ones that need to be removed for either the homes or the grading or the driveway or for, for solar. Most of these are for, you know, um, through the driveway and the homes, but fall within the area of what would be needed for solar access. <clears throat> if that helps explain. Yeah, I mean, is the logic. I'm just trying to understand how, like at the back end, how we actually verify that. I, I don't actually know how that works. <laughs> like, um, uh, I don't have an answer, but uh, I mean, I trust that that's what you're doing. It seems seems right. I don't know. It just seems a little bit fuzzy, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Maybe what we need is just a more a, a, a bigger drawing to, of that area of, of let those lower south lots and just show the specific trees and, and how the shadows work or something. I assume that's what you did to figure them out anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, uh, so we'll, we'll come back to the board uh, in just a moment, but uh, is there anybody here from the public that has any comment? Okay, not yet, not hearing any. Um, okay, so just uh, briefly, one last pass. Anybody have questions for the applicants before we close public comment? Okay, so, uh, Seeing none, hearing none, uh, do I have a motion to close public comment? I'd like to move that we close the public comment period. All right, I have a second. I think I, I saw can... Melissa. Okay. Yep. Um, okay, so I'll call the roll. Um, David? Yes. Uh, Sam? Yes. Chris? Yes. And Melissa? Yes. And I as well, yes. Okay, so uh, public comment is closed. Um, we have further discussion from the board. Okay. Um, uh, okay, so um, with that said, any further comment from Carolyn or from the board or anybody at all? Um, do we have a handle on the I know there's some on the staff report, some conditions noted. Um, does anybody want to, or do we want to have Carolyn summarize the conditions from the proposed conditions from the discussion and the staff report? Sure, I can do that. Um, so this relate, these relate to the comments you were just um, describing and discussing that um, the, um, at the time of the building permit application, they should, the applicant shall provide the information um, that the new houses, <clears throat> excuse me, will meet the net zero, net zero energy standards. Um, and uh, oops, I, I think that also that prior, we sh there should be a condition about um, prior to issuance of the final CO that those have been actually been built to um, meet the net zero energy standards. Um, also, prior to final certificate of occupancy, the applicant shall uh, show that a payment be made um, for the um, to mitigate for the 141 inches of 
tree that are removed that are not subject to the requested waiver. Um, and just to sort of wrap it all up that all other conditions from the original permit still stand. This isn't a replacement permit, but it's just sort of an added permit. <clears throat> um, and I think, um, I think that that um, is what I have and that addresses your comments. But um, obviously if that isn't, then feel free to add. Anybody feel like that? There's anything they'd add, Chris? The only the only thing is, um, and I don't know if it's our responsibility or not, but just to protect the, the homeowners. It sounds like there's going to be a homeowners association. I just want to make sure that the driveway for that flag lot. True. There's yeah. we're protecting that buyer that they can that they're allowed to access their driveway. Um, right. So you can add another condition. That's a good point. Um, that you raised that um, prior to, um, actually I think probably before a building permit can, should be, before building permits issued for the either of those lots, one or two, um, oops, I'm not sure if that's what, how they're labeled. Um, the flag lot and the original house lot um, that um, cross access easements are granted for um, the driveway. Um, that uh, for the flag lot. Thank you. This is an easement. Um, there's a collection of easements, <laughs> and um, that has been noted. Okay. Um, okay. So um, if that if that uh, marks all the conditions that that uh, would be proposed, do I have uh, here a motion to? Um, approve this, um, what is it, it's, it's a site plan uh, amendment actually, right? Special permit, um, special permit. Special permit, sorry. Um, with the conditions just noted by uh, Carolyn. I'll approve, I'll motion to, um, <laughs> I'll move to approve the special permit with conditions noted by Carolyn. All right, thank you, thank you. Uh, do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, thank you. Uh, sorry, just getting late. I, I don't. I didn't mean to react. <laughs> um, uh, so I shall call the roll. Uh, David. Yes. Sam. Yes. Uh, Chris. Yes. And Melissa. Yes. And I also vote uh, yes. Here. There. Very good. Well, you know, when we, when we meet in person again, we can like throw, you know, paper clips at each other to, you know, wake up. <laughs> when it's forming everyone. Yes. Yeah. No, thank you very much. Thank Melissa, you, everyone, for, for coming in. Um, good luck with your project. It looks like it looks like a nice project and uh, they're going to be beautiful homes. So uh, good luck with that. Many thanks. Um, Thank you. All right. So briefly, uh, before we go, uh, we should approve the minutes. So I only got um, two of the three sets I had planned to try to get to you. <laughs> so oh, okay. I think it's yeah, just think it's March, just the March minutes. Um, actually, um, March 8th and 25th, I think it was. 11th March, and 25th. March 11th, March 11th, yeah. Do we have to do them separately? No. So, okay. So have people read the minutes or reviewed the minutes of uh, March 11th and March 25th? Uh, and do I hear a motion to, a? well, do I hear any corrections or additions or amendments? Support the minute. Okay, I think I heard Sam go. I probably have to approve the minutes. And it's good. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I will take that as a motion to um, approve the minutes of March 11th and the 20 what fifth. Do um do I have a second? Thank you. All right, so I will call the roll. Um, Chris. 
still reading them. Let me vote last. <laughs> okay, I'll call you last. Um, David. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> Sam. Yes. Uh, Chris, the speed reader. Yes. That was a thumbs up, but go with the yes. But and now I, I have also... read them, so I can say yeah. Okay, very good. It's very diligent of you. Um, and I also vote yes. And let it be done. Uh, yes, Carolyn? Like nope, that's something. all I have. <laughs> I move okay. to close the meeting. So we have a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. Second. So I shall again call the roll. Chris. Yes. David. Yes. Sam. Yes. And I also vote to adjourn the meeting.